Good evening, folks, and uh, it is 7.03, and we are now opening the Board of Select meeting, um, and um, we're going to uh, just read you the open meeting rules here um, <clears throat> in order to have a virtual meeting <clears throat> pursuant to the government's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC, 30A, paragraph 20, as well as the Select Board's emergency order dated 3-16-2020. The Select Board will be using remote participation for this meeting. The audio of this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town's website within 24 hours in accordance with the Governor's emergency action requirement of keeping the public informed of actions during this meeting. I would ask that all participants remotely attending this meeting please state your name for identification purposes each time you speak throughout the meeting. At this time, a roll call attendance will be taken. Tina, are Here, you present? present? Yes. John? Present. And Mark is present. Um, and we will now uh, start the uh, the meeting and um, keeping with the agenda, we would like an update. Um, and just just so that we're all organized, um, when someone presents as uh, the fire chief is about ready to, I will then ask uh, the clerk of the board of select if she has questions or comments. And then I will ask the vice chair of the board of select if he has questions or comments, then I'll, I'll make uh, comments or questions. And then I will ask the conference call um, for anyone else who would like to make com comments or questions. So that in mind, Mr. Cassidy, would you please give us a update? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Michael Cassidy, Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director for the town. Uh, I'd like to report that at this time, based on the statistics, it would suggest that we in Holliston are possibly entering the post-surge phase of the coronavirus response. As of this evening, we have a 45 total number of uh, diagnoses of coronavirus in Holliston. 23 of those cases have recovered. We have one coronavirus-related fatality, and we still have 21 active cases. It has been two months since I first addressed the board regarding the need to implement mitigation strategies and to implement uh, changes to address as a community, the, the uh, public health emergency. And in those two months, 38% of the cases occurred in the first month and 62% of the cases occurred in the subsequent month. Of those 45 cases, 22% of them have been at long-term care facilities. And those 45 cases represent 37 unique addresses. Based on the governor's comments this afternoon at his press conference, we are still anticipating uh, additional guidance from the state coming out no later than next Monday with regards to the four phases that the governor has laid out for reopening the Commonwealth. Based on that guidance, I will be continuing to coordinate with department heads and other town departments regarding what reopening of town government will look like in the coming weeks and months. It's my hope that based on that guidance that is next week, that at the earliest that we could open the recycling center on the weekend of May 23rd, depending on the conditions that are required as part of the first phase. I continue to brainstorm with the town clerk regarding the polling location needs for our upcoming local election. Continue to brainstorm with the schools regarding what graduation will look like. And I continue to coordinate with the facilities manager regarding the return to work plan for town departments. However, I can say that physical distancing and masks will be with us for a long time. And with that, I will take questions. Ms. Sign, do you have any questions? Uh, well, so I was going to bring up at the end under new business, um, Mark, but with Chief Cassidy on the phone, I'll, I'll just bring it up now. Um, 
I think that the business community has has quite a bit of questions, quite a few questions about what, as you alluded to, Chief Cassidy, the the reality we're going to be living with when things start to open up again. So. Um, I think when we get the governor's um, update on May, May 18th, it would be really helpful to reach out to the business community, as I'm sure you're planning to do, to give them some advice on how to open. Um, I know that they have a lot of creative ideas uh, as to what might work for them. We're all waiting for the information. Um, but yeah, I guess I'd put that out there that um, they're going to be looking for some answers on how they can, number one, recover from the past two months of diminished business, and number two, how they can capitalize or make the most of uh, the conditions which we'll have after May 18th. So I just wanted to point that out. Absolutely. And with, with regards to the, the downtown businesses and, and any business in town, it's possible that between now and May 18th, the governor could issue interim guidance as we saw last week with golf courses. Mm -hmm. So there is a possibility that specific industries or sections of our economy may have the ability to open prior to May 18th. Uh, and I, if there's anything in town that fits in those categories, we of course will work with them as we did with the golf course last week. Great, thank you. Absolutely. John, any questions? I want to follow up on that a little bit, Mike. Um, you mentioned just moments ago that social distancing and other PPE use are with us for a very long time. Um, but I think the statement needs some context. Uh, while those measures may be within in our lives for the foreseeable future, it's distinctly possible that our lives may start to reopen as we enter businesses or begin to enter public spaces. We'll do so with these kind of conditions. Is that a safe, safe statement to make, Mike? Absolutely. So we're anticipating that some of the guidance that will come from the governor next week, even if specific industries are allowed to reopen, will have the requirement for any employee who cannot practice physical distancing from other coworkers or from the public will likely be required to have face coverings. And I anticipate that for a while, uh, any patrons who are going into businesses where they can't maintain physical distancing would also be required to have face coverings. That is correct. Now, to follow up on that, one of the items we continually discussed every week, and and no week this week, not unlike many others, Mike, I've gotten calls from it's about the landfill and the use of it. It continues to remain closed. Um, I asked you last week, and I'll ask you again this week: under what conditions do you envision uh, Holliston reopening? landfill with any of the social distancing and PPE use that you've just recommended? Are we close? Are we getting there? Give us give us your insight. So un unless uh, something radical happens with the governor's guidance uh, on or about May 18th, I would anticipate that the earliest that we could open up would be the weekend of May 23rd, at which point we could have extended hours. We would still need any patrons that were coming in to use uh, face coverings, and they would need to maintain physical distancing. But the reason that it's closed right now is because it is not deemed to be an essential business. Therefore, that's why it's not opening up, uh, because it is not an essential business. So theoretically, a week from today, we should learn more about the direction that that uh, declaration will take and the impact it could have on uh, the town's landfill, for example. That is correct. Yeah, my, my, my hope is that by next week at this time, we will be able to definitively say that uh, the earliest that the landfill uh, recycling center could, on Marshall Street could open would be Saturday, May 23rd. Uh, final question, Mr. Chairman, for uh, Chief Cassidy. Um, and by the way, please accept my, uh, my most sincere thanks, Mike, for all the work you continue to do. What, what folks in town don't know is how consuming uh, this emergency management job is right now during this time and by the way you're our fire chief so i we receive your daily updates we know how active you are um we appreciate the effort it's it's a uh, yeoman work my follow-up question um has more to do with um making <laughs> work environments for um the employees as they hello i think we had an incursion yeah we sure did all right, I'm guessing Mayo's on that. Um, Mike, just back to the point, 
I'm guessing that uh, you are taking steps for our uh, conversation last week to um, look at safe return to work standards, what has to occur um, across the board for each of our facilities. Uh, can you give us any updates on that? Sure. So I've been uh, I've been working with our facilities manager with regards to the physical infrastructure to be able to distance uh, and protect our employees who have counters. Then I am putting together guidance which specific to uh, workers, and it's going to be everything that we've been talking about for the last 60 days. It's physical distancing, it's face covering, it's uh, a hybrid of working in person, it's working remotely, staggering work hours, um, having employees uh, work different days so that they're not in the same combined space. It's hygiene, it's cleaning, it's sanitation, um, it's, it's a whole bunch of active steps to ensure that we don't have uh, people exposing their coworkers or exposing the public or the public exposing them uh, to the virus until very good. Thank you, Mike. Mike, um, I had a question. <clears throat> Who's doing that? Yeah, I can't. Is, um, could I inter interrupt for a second, Mark? Is Chris Mayo on the line? Yeah, he's trying to find that person. Uh... Should we should we discontinue this call and... Um... It's Linda Marshall. I would cut off Linda Marshall. <laughs> really? For being hacked. For being oh. hacked. <laughs> Okay, did you cut her off? Okay. Uh, Chris, Chris, I'd like to recommend that we uh, discontinue the call and reconvene in a minute with um, a new password, please. We've been compromised, I believe. I agree. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. folks, we'll be back in a, few, in a minute. Well, we, we have to kind of announce the password. Yeah. Um, so we will, we will uh, six one. I think we got everybody else is normal, but I mean, we have to keep it open to the public. Oh, yeah. Right. We need... I took off the one that was jumping off. Okay. Do you want to try it again? And if it happens again, we'll do something else. I, I agree. Okay. Let's start again. Can you hear me, everybody? I can hear you, Mark. So um, we think we got the, the person off, and we'll try again. If it happens again, then we'll do something else. But it uh, seems as though we're in good shape right now. Mark, can I just add that, uh, Mark, excuse me, it, um, were it to happen again, we can um, close the Zoom call to the this Zoom meeting to the public and just ask the public to call in on a telephone line, which I believe is up on the, on the website. Is that right, Chris? Yeah. Public can call in yep. for public comment using the telephone line. Yeah. So can we so close we'll, it? We'll, well, we'll see. Well, if it happens again, we'll. I, I, I set up a waiting room, so anybody that comes in, I have to approve now. Okay. Okay. All right. We should be good. Um, so my question, Chief, was um, <clears throat> I had sent out an email about um, businesses that have uh, shops that are, uh, are older in nature and they don't really um, provide at the six foot distance um, in some of these older buildings for the, for the items they sell and display. Um, is there a possibility uh, maybe after the 18th that we can allow them to use a portion of sidewalks or green space to try to help them um, because it's, you know, some of these older buildings, they're really not laid out. Um, they have all kinds of room and they're kind of made to be cozy, you know, a rustic and cozy and country and uh, that really doesn't lend itself to these situations. Do you have any thoughts on that? 
Absolutely. So with regards to some of those smaller businesses that may have a difficult time with the physical distancing requirements for reopening, and if they have outdoor space, that's going to take some collaboration and some creative approaches between our zoning enforcing agent, myself, uh, perhaps our town planner, and uh, perhaps also your office, depending on who it is that licenses uh, any of those individual businesses as to with regards to any restrictions that are currently in either their special permit or their variants or just our general bylaws. And we want to make sure that any outdoor display and any servicing of the public for uh, sales don't interfere with ADA requirements with regards to access on the sidewalks. But we can absolutely look at individual businesses and uh, try to be as possible uh, well maintaining safety and the distancing requirements. <clears throat> Great, thank you. So we'll wait until the 18th for that as well. Any questions? Yes, from... and uh, uh, if <clears throat> there's a specific business and, and they've got questions, I'd, I'd be happy to, to chat with them ahead of time. Okay, great. Stacy, you have a question? Good Stacey Raffi? Yep, good evening. Yep. Thank you. Actually, this is just a comment. Uh, we've had this comment, we had this conversation in a school committee meeting, but um, I think sometimes we have different audiences. So I just, on behalf of the Holliston Public Schools, really want to take this opportunity to thank um, Chief Cassidy for all of his work in partnership with us um, in particular, uh, but all that he has done for the town during this crazy time. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to be in a crisis, I, Chief is the one who I want to be in the crisis with. His, um, his demeanor, his calmness, um, I, we just, we thank you so much, Chief, and our students and families thank you as well. So I know it's tough, but we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Okay. We will move on to warrants. Tina, do we have a warrant? Yes, tonight's warrant for Monday, May 11th, 2020 is for $800,158.49, of which $157,961.27 is the town payroll. Okay, great. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll, roll call. Roll call. Tina, aye. John? John, aye. And Mark, aye. Okay, thank you. Moving on to public comment, Mrs. Hine. Yeah, I have two things tonight. Um, the first is a letter drafted today by our DPW superintendent, Mr. Sean Reese, in response to some community concerns over water quality uh, as that relates to um, the brown water this weekend and the scheduled uh, hydrant flushing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read an abbreviated version of the letter uh, that Mr. Reese submitted today to the board and to the town administrator. It goes as follows. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, annual spring hydrant flushing has been delayed um, in large part because the majority of residents remain at home. However, the water quality to many neighborhoods in town has become uh, unacceptable. Beginning on Wednesday, May 13th at 8 a.m. and continuing uh, Monday through Friday for four to six weeks, water uh -huh. hydrant, uh, hydrant flushing will begin. Prior notification of the flushing will be posted on the town website and Facebook page. The reverse 911 blackboard system will also provide notification along with the electronic message board and this current select board meeting. The town web uh, webpage will be updated daily with the hydrant flushing schedule. Some changes are expected. Again, those changes will be posted daily on the town's website. Please be aware that you may have colored water for several hours <clears throat> if you're is being flushed it will be it will clear but if at all possible avoid usage at that time to minimize disruption to your own household and then he goes on to say hydrant flushing is important to maintain the integrity of a water system 
Holliston continues to experience water quality issues that are below the standards we have come to expect. The design of the new water filtration plant is near 60% completed. Over the next few weeks, the select board will be updated in greater detail, including funding options and groundbreaking dates. The bid opening phase is on track for November 2020 with an operation, uh, operational plant in early 2022. Um, so that's the first of my public comment. Residents may have questions and I can refer back to it, Mark, if they do after hearing that. Uh, the second is an update from the Halston Community Action Fund and it's to announce that they are currently offering $80 gift cards to any resident experiencing COVID-19 related loss of income. Also, if the gift card uh, that a resident receives is $80 gift card, if it's used at a local business, the resident receives uh, an additional 20% off of the purchase at that local business. And information can be found at <coughs> hollistoncommunityaction.org to learn more. And that's all I have, Mark. Excellent, thank you. That's a great, great program they come up with. John, any, any uh, public comment? Not at this time, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I um, I would also um, just like to thank uh, um, all the all the hardworking um, first responders that we have uh, living in our town and the nurses and several we have in our town and hats off to all of you for all that you do for humanity <clears throat> and. Um, you know, I think I think there's a lot of people um, that feel the same way as I do is that we're we're overwhelmed with your professionalism and your caring for others. So we want to thank you. Any other public comment from the conference call? Any anybody at all? All right. A report of our town administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of items here to update the board on. Uh, thanks to the good works of, uh, of uh, Chris Mayo. Um, last week, we submitted the uh, fourth Green Communities grant application, um, it's the fourth app uh, submittal. And um, we're looking to uh, improve our efficiencies uh, at the schools and at the police station with this grant application. Wonderful. So um, it'll be probably several months before we hear uh, about the results of that. but. Um, we're looking uh, forward to that, and hopefully uh, we'll get funded again uh, in the coming months. Uh, we had a very good uh, conversation last Friday morning conference call with our sustainability coordinator, and uh, he is on your agenda next week for a uh, an update. Right. Um, and uh, so you'll be hearing from Matt Zatek uh, next uh, next uh, next Monday. Um, the governance committee is now at three uh, appointees out of five, which means they have a quorum. Um, I don't, I'm not sure yet exactly when they're going, going to be meeting, but um, uh, the final appointment letter will be going out uh, this week, and uh, they'll be ready to get going on their, on, their, on their mission. I had a message here from DPW that Hill Street will be closed from May 18th through the 20th, uh, May 20th. Um, and starting on May 20th, uh, Central Street from Fisk to Washington and Ashland Street from Concord Street to a the Ashland Town Line. Uh, so there'll be delays that should be anticipated and detours will be made as necessary. Finally, um, I received notification, uh, I believe it was from the state, that the uh, Signs and Lines project has been completed Thank you to Sean Reese and the Department of Public Works. Give me two part of your report. Okay. Um, thanks to Sean Reese and the Department of Public Works for getting that completed. I'm sure that uh, Tina is happy about that as well. Right, Tina? I couldn't unmute right. myself fast enough. I'm thrilled. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay, you couldn't hear that. Okay. Um, I have a message here from. Um, uh, this is a message to um, Mark Aroni, and last week uh, you requested a cost estimate for the water main break that occurred on Friday afternoon, May 1st, on water, uh, Winter Street. The overtime cost was $1,048.41. Uh, the equipment cost was $800. 
Material, including piping, couplings, gravel, and asphalt, was $1,152, a total of $3,000, not including the cost of water and its value. Now, every, uh, every break is different. Some take longer, some uh, require police details and more staff. There are all types of, types of unpredictabilities. Some cost vastly, some cost vastly more money or a longer disruption of service to residents. During that three-day period from Friday, May 1st to Monday, May 4th, the water system had two main breaks and one service leak. That is an unusually high number, but the fact remains that the system functions 24 hours a day and is always in need of attention and repair. It is important we continue to emphasize the need for new water treatment plant and water main replacement. Respectfully, uh, Sean Reese, Director of Public Works. Thank you. And so what Sean means by water main replacement is old uh, pipes that should have been replaced 40 years ago that we've been talking about for a couple of years here on our board. And um, I'm going to be asking Sean for a report um, from here on in on every break and what the cost is down so that the residents understand that this is not a situation that is um, stable, that we continue to have more and more breaks. It costs, costs you money. It costs you, the taxpayer, money. And you may not see it because it may not be in your neighborhood, but I'm going to report it uh, every single break so that you have an idea as to the situation is unattainable uh, to to have, um, you know, pipes in the ground that are so old and continue to break and cost this town thousands of dollars. So we need to have we need to have a better a better plan in place. We've been advocating for uh, three miles a year instead of the mile a year that we're doing, and um, we're going to keep advocating for that um, for the residents of Holliston. And um, once we have the treatment plan up and running and we're replacing these old pipes, um, hopefully we can be proud again of the quality of water in Holliston. Anything else? In your Nothing report? else for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the town administrator, Mrs. Hine? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Jeff, I'm wondering if you've gotten if you have an update from the Golf Course Advisory Committee on um, a decision that they were asked to to weigh in on in terms of uh, flashing lights for the pedestrian crossings. They have two up there that uh, connect to the golf course, and if I remember correctly, we had funding to do one of the intersections. So they were asked to either um, weigh in on if they could contribute money to complete both intersections, both crosswalks rather, or if they were going to choose one of the two. Do you, do you have an update on that or, or do we need to wait a little bit more? I sent them an email um, last week, I believe it was, uh, asking them to prioritize the intersection, so I have not heard back. Okay. All right. Thank you. John, any questions for Jeff? I do, Jeff. Um, if I recall, um, Mr. Reese um, was to come back to us and give us a follow-up answer on the water rate hearing, which I believe is technically still open. Uh, I think he said somewhere around mid to early April, excuse me, mid to early May would be the time frame when um, the information from his consultant would be available for us to uh, vote on water rates. Uh, do you have an update on that? I uh, sent him an email last week asking him for when the, what the time frame was, and um, I, I agree with you uh, that it was sometime in mid-May, um, or at the very least, uh, early part of June. Uh, and you're right, the hearing is still open. Uh, I'm waiting for a response back from him on that. I'll await your report on that. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. Thank you. Anyone have questions for the town administrator? Stephen Murphy has a question. Okay, Mrs. Murphy. I have a question. Mark, thank you for- Hi, Ben. Hi, Mark, how are you? Um, Good. I just have a comment or a question. I 
Mr. Reese gave me all the different books from the water system management plan and also the water system master plan. And to comment, just a clarification, was that water main break a break in the main? Was it a break in the connection? And the reason I ask is the comment from FST in the book, they said oftentimes it's not the pipes that are breaking, it's the connections. And the connections aren't something that part of the plan to replace which begs the question, what do we need to do? But just a clarification, what, ex what exactly broke for the water main? Let's see here. He's got uh, asphalt costs. He doesn't mention, he just mentions materials. So that that could mean anything. We can ask him for clarification. He may be on the line. Are you on the line, Sean? No? Okay. We can ask him for the clarification on on the parts. He just kind of puts it all together, lumps it together. Um, but um, we can get that for you, Vince, no problem. Thank you. You got it. He, he does have including materials, pipe, couplings, gravel, and asphalt. So I don't know exactly how much pipe, but I know there was some pipe, and I know there was couplings, but I don't know if there was a connection, as you pointed out. And the only reason I'm it. asking is because of the plan said, the plan that we're basing all our work on of doing all these pipes said the pipes weren't breaking. But if the pipes are breaking, that probably means our plan isn't the greatest. So maybe we re need to look at it, um, okay. you know, part of that argument. So I'm not disagreeing with yeah. you. I think we need to have a plan in place for the water pipes, I assure Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, and as I say, he only lists materials including was pipe, couplings, gravel, and asphalt. So I can ask him to break it down some more for you. Okay, I've got enough to do that. Um, and next, we're going to talk about our annual town meeting date and elections. Um, and um, is our town clerk on on the conference I call? Liz How I'm are here. you, Liz? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for having Good. me. Good. Um, Absolutely. Um, can you? Uh, Tell us what your thoughts are, Liz. Yes, as you know, the election is scheduled for June 23rd. Um, yeah. It's our essential, so we're gonna proceed with caution. Um, I've worked with Chief Cassidy and set up some um, parameters for that. Um, we're gonna do one way in and out. Um, so I'm gonna need somebody to guide the traffic flow, if you will. Um, I'm, I would like to reduce the staff so that we don't have as many people in there. I'm also going to, I've already ordered, I think, um, um, Mr. Keast has ordered some plexiglass shields for me for the tabletops. So that, Great. um, my goal is to, oh, great. He did order them. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. My my goal is to have no one come and vote. Of course, I can't disenfranchise any voters, but I would really prefer if everybody were to come in and were to vote early by mail. Um, the applications are on the website, and um, I think that would be the best practice for everybody. It would be safest for all. Um, let's see. Oh, and what I'm asking you to do tonight for me and to consider, um, given that we would like to have everybody vote by mail, I would like to reduce the hours of the election. And per Mass General Law, Chapter 54, Section 64, um, that can be done with a vote by the select board. So I'm asking you to do that. I would like the hours to be from 12 to 4. Um, if you have any questions, please, I'm open to discussion. Okay. 
Um, Tina, do you have any questions? Yeah, Liz, I know that you put a lot of thought into this decision and are making it with um, uh, all of that in mind for the, the best decision so we can go ahead and run this election, which is important. Do you see any risks or any, do you have any concerns about short, shortening from uh, a full day to four hours? Like when you kind of go through um, what is, is anything lost in your mind or like, what are your concerns over dropping from a full day to 12 to four? Um, well, I did a five year average of an annual town election. And in the last five years, we've had several We've had uh, ballot questions, we've had races, and the average is 13% of the vote of the voters. So it's not it's not usually a big turnout. Uh, we've had 137 so far, um, which is what nine percent, I think, um, or oh nine percent, something like that. Anyway, so we we um, the the ballot applications are coming in. I think people, the community, feels the same way about um, not wanting to go into the polls. Another issue I might have is actually getting poll workers. Um, my staff is yeah. making phone calls and um, a lot of people are, are bowing out. Okay. So that can be an issue as well. So you're seeing voter concerns about showing up to actually poll in person. You're seeing, you're hearing some concerns about it or a preference to vote by mail. Yes, yes, I would, I'm strongly encouraging that. Right, thank you, that's all I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any thoughts on it, yeah. Okay, John, do you have a question? Uh, just a couple of things, Liz, uh, two questions. Number one, um, in a recent conversation, you gave me some feedback on another local election, I think it was in Medfield. If you could speak to those details. And my second question is, um, do you envision this modified town um, election environment to also have any restrictions on candidates, for example, who typically meet outside the polling place that try to interact or converse with uh, voters as they uh, enter and exit the polling place? Do you see some prohibition on that? Um, is that is that something uh, you would you would extend that to? Um, okay, first in Medfield, yes, there was an election. I think it was on May fifth. And they had 640 something turnout total. And of that only 122 people came in and physically voted. Um, and they were there all day and they did the full 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. with only 600 voters. So um, that's why I think the reduced hours would work well for us. Um, and as far as the candidates, as long as they are practicing social distancing, and I don't, I don't see any prohibition on that. If they, okay. they want to campaign. Uh, um, do you have? Oh, I'm sorry, John. Go I'm ahead. A quick follow up. Um, I would imagine, Liz, that whatever you put in place for June will be something to build on for upcoming primary and general elections. Um, is it too early to talk about what those? Um, elections will look like come September and then following in November? Um, I think that some of our protocols will stand, will be improved on. I know the Secretary is still, Secretary of State is still working on um, some other options. So every, the balls are still up in the air. So I, I can't really comment on it. What, what September? So, November so not, not a question, Liz, but if you want to just, um, again, direct anyone listening um, where to find the, uh, the ballot to vote. Um, the application is right on the website. It's on the front page. Um, and it says vote, and then just click on it, and it brings you right to the application. Fill it out, mail it into our office, and we'll get you a ballot right away. And ballots all have to be received by the close of polls, and they have to be received at the town clerk's office, not at the polls. So just get them in and get them done as soon as possible. Um, and I think that would be the best way to do it. Thanks, Liz. You're welcome, John. Um, so Liz, do you have any more guidance for candidates? Um, obviously, uh, they need to keep this six foot distance um, away from others. Um, 
but usually we have people standing out by the corner with signs and usually people congregate. Um, do you have any any uh, recommendations for the candidates um, so that um, they can uh, maintain safety? Um, well, there there are laws that um, that pertain to campaigning out there, so they have to stay 150 feet away from the entrance. So that's why they all congregate over there by that. Um, uh, what is that um, wall over there? And um, as far as the maintaining the six foot distance, they have to be responsible themselves. You know, we'll come out and check and make sure, but we hope that everybody is is taking care of themselves. The one thing that that is regulated as well is signs must be held. So signs cannot be just propped up um, on that um, wall right there. So okay. uh, they would have to be there in person. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and so what would you need from us? Um, you need a motion for the change of the time uh, for elections 12 to 4 p.m. But we don't really need to vote on the date because we already established that. Correct, correct. Okay. And and you will need, um, I believe you're moving town meeting or have you made that decision? Well, well I was gonna suggest we move that up on the agenda while you're on the line. And we'll right. talk about that next. Well, I bring that up because um, I will need a separate warrant because typically town meeting and town election are on the same warrant. So if okay. town meeting is after the election, I will need to have a separate warrant, which we can write up for you, and that's not a problem. That can be signed at a later date. Um, okay. But this, oh, yes, I, I, I'm asking you if you could do that for me, please. Okay, so we'll do this vote, and then we'll go right into um, annual town meeting date. Uh, <sighs> As well, we've got you on the line. Does that sound good to everybody? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'll take a motion, uh, John. So if you could articulate, Liz, the uh, language you'd like us to use in this motion, please. Um, the annual town election, June 23rd, 2020, be held for from four hours from noon to 4 p.m. And do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Aye. I'm gonna, I'm gonna a do a roll call. Tina? Yeah. Aye. 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 John? I have a question. Okay. Liz, in addition to this motion, I thought you mentioned that um, there had to be some conditions upon the type of voting that we were going to um, uh, include. Is that is that all in this motion, or do you do you feel like that's a separate? Oh, you mean the, by mail? Yes, ma'am. No, that does not have to be in there. That's okay. All right, thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. So that's a second on me. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That that passes. Roll call. You got that, Jeff. You, roll, you, you want roll call? Yep. Okay, Tina, roll call? Aye, yes. John? Aye. And Mark, aye. Okay. All right, let's move on to annual town meeting date um, while we have Liz on the phone. So um, it's, it's pretty clear that um, we're not going to have information from the state as far as uh, the um, assistance that they give our town or, or any town for that matter. Um, and um, I did talk to uh, Pooja, who is the assistant for uh, um, Senate President Spilker. And um, um, she, she indicated that it, it would be a while before we know um, any numbers at all. So I'll open it up. Uh, Tina, if you want to start? If we're discussing moving town meeting, I, I really don't feel any uh, sense of urgency to, to make a decision. I understand what 
uh, our town clerk is saying, and if it's helpful to, to suggest that it will be later than the town election, I'm comfortable saying that, that I think that that is a very smart move uh, to strongly consider a town meeting that is after June 23rd. But in terms of setting a date, I really feel like there's a lot more information that we need to have before we go ahead and do that. Um, for me, it's whether or not it's June or July. And I just don't feel like um, we're at a point today to make the decision to move it into July. And yet I don't, I don't wanna not consider that either, if that makes sense. So again, it, to, to answer our town clerk's question, I would say that it's highly likely this will be after June 23rd. So if that's helpful, I'm willing to say that. But um, whether or not this is in June or July, I, I'm not ready to say that yet. I, I think we need a lot more information. John, your your thoughts. Um, I would actually like the town administrator to uh, weigh in at this point. It was my understanding that the the, the recently passed legislation um, that allows communities to extend town meetings um, included the provision that we needed to take action um, before 30 days of the scheduled town meeting, and um, that would make this meeting. Um, the, the closest meeting that we have scheduled, Mr. Chairman, uh, within that 30 day window to address um, the scheduled June town meeting. So I guess to right. this point, we have, if that is the case, Mr. Ritter, you can, you can validate that if you like. My question is, um, we may have two steps to take. One is to postpone indefinitely or to consider an alternative date. Um, so that's what, those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. And um, our town clerk had mentioned we need to do another warrant um, as well. So that's something we need to think about. Um, so um, the, the answer to your question, um, John, is that, um, you know, and I, I might want to yield to uh, Chief Cassidy if he's out there still, I, which I think he is. I'm not positive. Um, but, um, you know, the gathering of people more than at the moment at this point, point in time, the gathering of more than 10 people in one place is not advisable. So um, we currently have scheduled um, a town meeting for June 15th. Um, my recommendation would be that uh, the town uh, or the board uh, vote to delay the town meeting until um, July 13th or July 20th at the moment. You can always extend that out further given, you know, additional information that's coming in from the state. Okay. That sounds like good advice. Um, uh, any any may, more comments? Mark, if I may, uh, my question is, must we make a decision tonight because June 15th is just over 30 days away? We're not meeting again. So I think right, it was right. five 30 days, then the power goes to the town moderator to extend that. Um, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Okay, so I guess to Miss Hines' point, Mark, and, and this is my point. This is my question: um, If we are to extend it to a certain date, or must we, or can we just indefinitely postpone it? What would be better for you, uh, Liz, as the town clerk? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, that's all right. Either way, for me. Would, would you rather have a firm date or or does it not matter to you? It doesn't matter to me, it's completely up to you. And, um, you know, do, doing the separate warrant for the election is really quite simple. So it's it's, okay. not, it's not a big deal. Okay. So I guess I would just jump back in again, John. I guess to be on the safe side and the conservative side, today is May 11th. Uh, our projected uh, an annual town meeting is on June 15th. Um, I would, I, I guess I would recommend that you, you know, vote to extend it until at least, um, July 13th. That way there you retain your authority as the board and not, you, you know, you don't, um, um, usurp it, I guess, to the, uh, the moderator at this point. So Tina, I get any comments? Go ahead, Tina. Sorry. Yeah. yeah I mean. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with putting a stake in the ground on a date. I, I hear what Jeff is saying about it doesn't have to be the July 30th, but um, 
I, my preference, I think at this point, if I'm following the conversation correctly, would be to, to definitely postpone it for the time being and to set a date at a later date. Um, Jeff, am I understanding your comments correctly that that's an, that's an option you're recommending? Um, yeah, that's basically correct, yes. You had, you had said to at least July. Until July 13th, yeah. July, July 13th or after? Yes, yeah. Was what he, was what he said. Well, John? I, um, I understand what Tina's saying. I think, I think we can achieve uh, both her goal and ours. And I'm thinking the 20th would be a better date, um, July 20th. Um, I want to point out that last week we asked the Finance Committee to give us their opinion, uh, Mr. Chairman, on, on their thinking because you know, the, the warrant is our warrant, but the omnibus is, you know, the financial pieces are their domain. And I believe they universally agreed for a, uh, a postponement beyond June. Um, they were on board. So with that in mind, and with our own sense that we still don't have enough information to make a clear FY21 uh, budget, I, I think I'm comfortable making a recommendation to move town meeting to July 20th um, with the provision that we can always change it to Tina's wishes. You know, Tina's hope is that we have some flexibility and I'd like to think that we can play with that um, as, as things go forward. Um, the second part of this, of course, is following the, um, the vote to, um, hopefully vote to uh, extend it again into July, we must undertake the task of um, preparing and uh, handling a 112 budget, Mr. Chairman. Um, right. And that'll, right. that'll take some time as well to make sure we get that right. We'll have to involve right. council, as I believe he indicated at his meeting with us last week that the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services had not yet released guidelines for communities submitting those 112 budgets. So that's work that has to happen following uh, any vote for an extension. Right. And right. I, I was being, I think I was being difficult before uh, Mark, John, and Jeff. I've, I've just become friends again with my calendar here. And I see that uh, it's either Monday, June 29th, or Monday, June 6th, uh, July 6th, rather. And that's the holiday. So I get it. I, I agree with yeah. John. The, the 20th gives us the opportunity to meet on July 13th before town meeting. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah. I wasn't and looking at also yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And and it gives us some time to gather more information, too. So I'll take a motion, if you'd like, to uh, extend the annual town meeting. John? I'll make a motion to extend the Holliston annual town meeting from June 15th, 2020 to July 20th, 2020. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that passed unanimously, and now we have to do roll call. Uh, Tina? Aye. John? Aye. And Mark, aye. Okay. Thank you, Liz. I'm glad we're able to do this so you don't have to wait uh, till later in the evening. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All Thanks. right. Talk to you soon. so early, too. You got it. All right, next on the agenda is the school committee capital requests. And we'll go to Stacy. Good evening, and thank you for inviting us to the virtual table this evening. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, Mark, if I may, I've asked um, that Lisa Koshin and Andy Morton and Anne Louise Hanstead, who, are, who make up the budget subcommittee, of the school sure. committee, if they could join us, if, if that would be all right. Absolutely. Uh, and I'd like to um, pass the baton over to them, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Hi, this is Anne Louise. Oh, sorry. This is Anne Louise Hanstead. I'm chair of the school committee's budget subcommittee. And over here in square number 12, we have Andy Moore. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> um, that's like Hollywood squares. Um, so we just wanted to give you um, kind of a preliminary update because like you, there is so much in flux that we 
are in a difficult position trying to lock down, um, frankly, on capital in particular. So several weeks ago, and forgive me, I probably up this day, either um, Dr. Jackson or um, Mr. Boudet will have to be sure. We um, adjusted our uh, requested operating budget uh, down to basically hold steady as she goes. So with really no, um, no material increases for FY21. Um, and, and even that was now, I'm going to say, you know, a solid six weeks ago. Um, and the world has changed. We have not revoted our capital budget for a few reasons, and I just wanted to share those with you. Um, and it's not because we think the budget as it as it was established in uh, early March um, is is at this point appropriate for FY twenty one. Um, First and foremost, um, initially there we, we had a lot of discussion around several of the line items and. Um, the feeling was that as the economy shifted, actually some of the projects would become more affordable because typically in a down economy, you um, can take advantage of um, much lower costs in materials and supplies. Labor costs tend to lag. Um, so, you know, I don't know, and we have to kind of work with prevailing market wages. So I don't think that's where we would see significant savings. Um, so that that was one consideration and we wanted to hold out to get a better understanding of projects that um, potentially could be completed over the summer that were on the list where, you know, a meaningful savings to the town um, could be accrued by pursuing them. And that may sound counterintuitive in um, a down economy, but those savings, if they're significant, could um, accrue to other advantages and, and opportunities. Um, I think at the time that decision, again, it was a while ago, um, there were a few major projects on the list. And at this point, um, we've looked at them and, and there would be some savings, but um, they aren't significant enough. I believe you warrant, um, you know, moving forward with them. So maybe that'll be reassuring to a number of you. Um, and I can have uh, Mr. Bidet go, th go through those. But the second thing that we have not um, locked down the number at this point is that after much discussion, we have to guide guidance on what the reopening is going to look. I can't hear her. Can you hear me? Um, no. That's better now. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you just repeat the last couple sentences? Sure. From the state. Yeah. We we really need additional guidance from the state on the phased reopening because that will dictate um, the district's plans for reopening in September. I think it's fair to say that um, reopening business as usual is probably not what we're looking at. Um, and the scenarios after that vary significantly from um, some type of sort of modified hybrid reopening to, you know, all the way to uh, worst case from a uh, educational standpoint, a pure virtual scenario like what we're um, in right now. But they all have very different financial implications. And quite honestly, this is very complex work for um, all of our teachers and administrators and healthcare professionals. Um, and, and I'm sure um, uh. Mike Cassidy right now is saying, yes, that's it's a lot. And, and Mike, thank you for all of your, I should call you Chief Cassidy. Thank you for all the work. I will reiterate everything Stacy said that you're doing with the district um, to help ensure that this planning um, is thorough um, and that we have all our T's crossed and I's dotted. So until we understand um, what the implications are for these different reopening scenarios, it's really impossible at this point in time to look at the shape of the capital budget. We could be looking at um, purchases for PPE, for uh, for teachers, for students, et cetera. Um, there could be a need for additional technology. There could be a need for 
um, additional staff. I, you know, it's hard to say where buses are, et cetera. So until we understand better the implementation plan, we can't map out the budget implications precisely enough to lock down on a capital budget. So um, I hope everybody understands that and, and we're open to questions. I know the next question will really be around timeline. And I, I think um, it's difficult, but we need to be patient and give our administration the time that they need to work through all of this with um, the emergency management professionals. And that probably is going to take, it could be a month, it could be two. Um, right. And we will not know, frankly, which one of the, once they map out the scenarios, we're not going to know which one we go with until probably very close to school opening. Um, so Dr. Jackson or Keith Boudet or even uh, Chief Cassidy, if you want to weigh in on that, and certainly the rest of the budget subcommittee, please feel free to. Anybody? A, Go ahead, Tina. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, Anne Louise, or anyone on the subcommittee, or, or Dr. Jackson, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now the capital expenditure article that's in the draft warrant has three school um, items. One is technology, another is the committee and field repairs, and the third is the Miller roof. Do I have that correct? That was what was submitted as of March? Yeah, those are all the items in there. Okay, so we do have a we have a little bit of guidance from DLS that that came out on Friday as to how to approach a one twelve budget, um, if that were the reality. And it's obviously with our decision to move town meeting to um, no sooner than July twentieth. That's going to be the reality, as as John alluded to. Um, their recommendation in their most recent bulletin is that capital items are not a part of that one twelve budget. Right. So my question would be, you know, July and potentially August, there's no spending on capital. What does that do in that scenario? What does that do to the committee and field repairs? And what does that do to the roof uh, on the Miller School? Are, are those things that in a, in a scenario where students are back on campus, we have a traditional model of education as we did at the start of this past academic year. Um, are those projects that are happening during the school year? Or were those envisioned to be projects that are happening when students are out of school over the summer? Because at this point, with a 112 budget following DLS recommendations, we're not spending capital over the summer months, July and, and possibly August. So this is all scenario, all hypothetical, but that, that's kind of my question is, does that change how you look at the existing requests for capital in terms of not technology, but the community and field and the Miller roof? Well, let me just back up. One of the reasons those two, typically the bulk of capital requests for the town occur in the special town meeting in the fall. Um, but one of the reasons that the schools and other departments will submit requests in the spring is so that we can pursue projects when students aren't in school. Um, and the committee and field repairs and roof repairs are two examples of projects that would be ideally done when kids don't need access to those facilities or would be in any way, you know, shouldn't be around the construction, if you will. Um, so that is why um, they were on the spring request. Um, I don't think I took away that there from the state's guidance that there would be no capital expenditures happening during the summer. Um, I think, however, it, pursuing projects of that scale, it really comes down to, and again, we haven't made any formal decisions, haven't voted formally now on, on any adjustments to the request you have in front of you. I think some of that will come down to the necessity of pursuing a particular project, like the roof could be different than committee and field, which you know, Mayor, that could, that could easily go away. But Keith, do you want to speak to this? Hmm. And by the way, sorry, Keith, one second. I'm sorry, Annelies. I realized too that I've, I've completely dumped this on you because this just came to us on. on okay. You <laughs> in line, Tina. <laughs> so I, I really put it out there as a big hypothetical. I'm sorry, Keith, go ahead. That's okay, Tina. Um, 
with regards to committee and field, the, the, the reason we would do it in the summer is because under normal circumstances, it's used for our own athletic teams and our wellness classes during the school year. So that's why that becomes a summer project. What I will say is that if we delay much longer between having to bid out the job uh, you know, for the labor piece, there's, there's probably almost no chance they're going to be able to schedule us during the summer because they'll take their people and go someplace else that's more open, say, than Massachusetts is. Okay. So the likelihood is that committee and field may be dead, dead in the water regardless okay. um, if we don't move on it soon. Okay. Um, the, the roof project, in theory, we could do it. The major section that needs to be replaced is over the cafetorium. If we were to, you know, it would be something we could do in theory when school was in session. It would be a challenge, obviously noise and, and laborers who are going to need to then be, uh, you know, Corey, uh, you know, to do the project. So could it happen in the fall? I guess so. It's still better in the summer, but okay. if money's not available, money's not available. So. Okay. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Thank you. John, questions? I do a quick follow-up uh, for Keith. Keith, have um, you folks heard from MIAA about um, any kind of uh, planning for fall sports at this point? Are talking about scheduling them or or not are there any, any any discussions at all no we haven't had any we haven't heard i don't think you've have you heard anything brad because i have not no they they are um heck they just canceled spring sports two weeks ago so um i think they are will be uh, that'll be a much more of a game time decision around um you know that will come in the early to mid august time frame and they and, and John, they were very late to the to the party with regards to um, canceling the spring season. So they're not they're going to react after um, what Desi does. So I think they like you know so many other departments and, and organizations and universities haven't called it either. No one's called like what's happening with football season at the university level. So I, I think they're waiting because the world could look really different by August. I'm all set. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Keith. I have a question um, in regards to the Miller roof. How bad is it? And um, typically, roofs are not something that you like to to uh, wait too too long with. Um, moisture can get in, ruin insulation. We can have mold. Um, how bad is it? And, and should we? Uh, contemplate trying to come up with the funding for this in another way. The, um, the, Mark, the, the, the roof isn't leaking currently. The, the, the underlayment is soft. So if you go on it, you can feel that it's starting to give there. So it's not leaking yet. The, okay. you know, we're not to the point of tarping it. So, okay. um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there are risks involved with waiting. If, you know, if we had to go forward on an emergency basis, you know, I, I yeah, there, you know, there's there's obviously funds that could be available either through um, the, the 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 town set aside for buildings, or 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 reserve fund transfers, or you know, uh, uh, funds from the schools if we had to to be replenished at a later date. So, there, I mean, there are things we that can be done, kind of on the fly if necessary. I mean, it's better to have set aside the money up front, but. Um, right, you know. Right. Um, trying to remember how much that item was. I saw it. At it was one put, point. Do you remember? We had we had a ninety four thousand dollar quote, but it was not a prevailing wage quote. So I had to estimate, push that up some. It was from a local vendor. We have not obviously gone out to bid because I don't like to waste vendors' times. You know, going out to bid for things that may not be funded. Um, right. But it, it was a it was a real quote in hand. I, I added about 20% for prevailing wage because in general, that's kind of what it is from out here in Holliston compared yeah. to city rates, which is where we end up falling. Um, uh, but, Mr. Chairman, it's in the warrant currently for 125,000. 125 currently in the warrant? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Jeff, do you have any thoughts on this roof repair? Uh, I mean, it's... Um, it's not. It's not like the other uh, capital requests at all. This is protecting a town's asset, mm -hmm. and uh, 
And uh, this also has to do with safety and... Uh, I mean, my feeling is that it's a relatively small amount of money. You have the money in the uh, already, you know, uh, allocated um, for the uh, capital expenditures. I would do it myself. That's what I would do. Okay. So you'd keep it in the warrant? Yes. Yeah. I uh, I agree with you. I I don't think things like that should be pushed pushed off. Um, if it's spongy now, we don't know what's going on under there. It could get a lot worse. And we've had our problems with roofs in this town. Just like I've said many many times, if it was your house, what would you do? Right. 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 I mean, look at us with the library, and we're so fortunate no one got hurt. Right. With that roof. I would do it. Um, done. Any thoughts on this, Tina and John, as to what you would do? I mean, I think Jeff's advice is right on the money. So. I mean, I, I was not prepared tonight. Uh, didn't, was not going to make recommendations at all on what should be or should not be in, in the article. Uh, I very much wanted to hear and listen. Um, I don't disagree with, with uh, the seriousness of a roof repair, um, but I was not prepared to make a suggestion one way or the other. Um. Okay, John? I would agree with Ms. Hine. Um, although listening to Ms. Hanstead's and um, Mr. Bidet's explanations, the, the roof seems to elevate above the other two in terms of urgency, but I think it's a bit premature to take a vote on whether Oh, or no, I'm not looking for a vote. I just wanted to know your, your thoughts yeah, I'm, uh, I, based on yeah. what we're hearing. Well, I, I would guess, agree, I'm sorry, John. I would agree. We, the, roof, we, the roof does separate from the other other two items. Right, and I and I I, I mean, so if if we're gonna be leave, and obviously we're not voting on on any of the warrant items for the school capital request. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Halstead pointed out there needs to be a lot more work, but I think on this particular item, I th I think it should be noted that it is uh, much more of importance um, and for, for safety and, and uh, protecting town assets point of view. And Mark, I'll just add one more comment. And I think Ann Louise has a comment to put in as well. Um, so if, yeah. we, if we go back to the whole, like we, we voted to move forward on the um, statement of interest for the news for the, why am I blanking? This is such a lifetime ago, the um, new high school building maintaining the the property maintains although not the high school um i think right. it's, it's good practice uh, across the board to, to maintain our, our building so again agree with jeff agree with mark agree with john the roof uh, is a different creature altogether uh, as a as an important um capital project sorry Anne louise i think and, no i and louise go ahead yeah no i i really appreciate you mentioning that last point because that was one of the things um that I was going to reiterate. And, and I want to thank all three of you for your thoughtful and considerate um, sort of input on this. The, yeah, roof, I, I think those are good words, John, a roof separates itself maybe from the field in, in um, an economic environment like this. You want to make sure you're doing what's right for the facility and what's safe for our students. Um, having, having said that, I, I want to make sure that everyone kind of leaves tonight with two uh, points of clarification. Um, the first is regarding the um, the technology request, which it's sort of bucketed, but there are line item details underneath that, and we don't need to go through that tonight. But I do want to point out now, more than ever, we are reliant on technology to deliver um, education to our students and provide equitable access. And I cannot emphasize enough how critical that is from pre-kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade. And when we crafted that capital request, it was not envisioned that way. So I think we, we kind of need to go back and sort of sharpen our pencils on the technology request to make sure that in the opening in September, looks different than what we're hoping we can make sure everything for district who um, is enabled and and we're we're managing right now um and we've we've got devices in uh student hands but there's more to it than that if we're going to do this in a scale way the second point again is just that 
What's not on that request right now are the things we don't know about. And I'm frankly more concerned about those things. So I just want to leave right. room in, in your hearts and minds that we may come back with some uh, additional items. Maybe, you know, the field gets jettisoned and, and other things arise, but those are, that's what's right. got me more concerned. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else? Want to talk? Okay. Thank you very much. And we'll wait for you to gather more information. Um, and you wanted to talk to us about the capital request policy itself. Um, were you able to get something to Tina that she could read? Yeah, I shared it with all of you actually. Um, and I want to apologize because, well, first off, I know this wasn't exactly on your agenda tonight, but it seemed relevant to the capital discussion. I also didn't have a version of your policy that I could edit directly and offer suggestions on. So I took the liberty of retyping the content and that's what I shared with you. So it's your content, it's your content word for word. Um, and really it comes down to just two changes. Um, first as a bucket, I just took the liberty of noting those uh, areas where um, you could change your reference from select selectmen and um, et cetera, to uh, select board now that um, we've evolved into a general. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those, I, I just made those references because I happen to note, note them. Sure. Um, and, but the, the main reference uh, or, or just verbiage that I wanted to see um, if we could take a look at is in the paragraph uh, that reads policy description. And for those um, at home, I'm just going to read the paragraph as written and then share with you um, our recommended edit. Um, okay. So there's a background description to this thing. I'm trying to avoid reading the whole thing. Unless, Tina, is this something you, you should be reading? Do you want to read no, it? Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the second paragraph reads policy description. All boards, committees, commissions, and departments elected and appointed are to follow the procedures outlined below when there is a need for a capital appropriation at town meeting. Failure to follow these procedures will result in your request to be stricken from the town meeting warrant before publication. And then it goes on to describe um, five different specific uh, procedural requirements with respect to timing and what's reviewed by when and submitted, et cetera, and voted on. Um, our request is that you amend the first sentence in this paragraph um, by uh, striking the words elected and appointed and replacing them with the words reporting to the select board. So that sentence would read, all boards, committees, commissions, and departments reporting to the select board are to follow the procedures outlined below when there is a need for a capital appropriation at town meeting, um, and so on and so forth. Um, our rationale for this is really uh, sort of very basic, and it's th there's two reasons. One, in its entirety, the policy um, <clears throat> makes sense from our vantage point, um, but for the departments over which the select board has direct authority. From a statutory perspective, um, it doesn't, uh, the, the school committee is an independent board. We are elected officials with um, a very clearly established purview by the Commonwealth, and that is independent of the other elected boards in town. As a matter of practice, we have always worked very closely with the Finance Committee to come to um, a recommendation that is a joint recommendation. We definitely, at times, you know, have to agree to disagree, and we'll go back and forth until we get to that point. Um, but I believe in my eight years on the committee, now we've been able to do that successfully and have that recommendation mm -hmm. presented to the town at town meeting to give um, the citizens of the town the opportunity to vote on that. And I just want to remind everyone that our, um, our budget is a line item within the overall article for capital and or um, 
and or operating. Um, so I definitely recognize and appreciate that the select board has final authority over what is printed in the warrant. Um, and the line items that pertain to your departments are absolutely yours to determine. Um, but th this is um, this is one that we feel pretty strongly about that as a matter of process and um, statute, we um, we should not be in a situation where the select board is voting on our requests before they're presented to town meeting. Um, so you know that's the that's kind of at the heart of it, but the other piece of it is a little bit more related to logistics. Um, the timeline, as you've laid it out, I think probably works quite well for all of your departments. But unfortunately, it's it's just a virtual impossibility for the schools. And the reason is that we don't begin our budget process um, in earnest until, I, I'm going to say, the last week of January, the first week of February. And the reason for that is that we're typically awaiting state guidance um, on local aid, in addition to trying to get a better picture on Chapter 70 funding and potential other costs that could typically come up mid-year. It's the best, it's the last point at which we <clears throat> can try to get visibility. So we can't even start the process until then. And it does take several weeks to get through the reviews and the iterations uh, that we will go through as a committee leading up to a public hearing that is almost always held in April. Um, for us to go through that process, allow for public input, input from really zero based, you know, right from the teachers up to the administrators and central office and for Jackson giving us his guidance, we can't get through it and meet your timeline. We'd, we'd be a month late before we started. Um, and so it's really in that vein that we are also asking that you, you know, sort of, if you will, exempt us from this timing um, minimally, but definitely um, we have concerns about, frankly, the legality of this applying to the schools at all. I don't know if uh, anybody else wants to weigh in on this. Gina, do you have questions? Oh, the, I, I came to this policy after it was drafted and voted on um, before I was elected to the board. So I'm, I'm learning about it through town council's input. Um, and so I think that the, I, I would disagree that removing elected and appointed and uh, replacing it with those that report to the select board, I, I would disagree that that's a, a reasonable uh, change to make. Um, I think more conversation would be needed. This is not on our agenda for, for totally a vote. Totally fine. Yeah, yeah, I get so that. I, I don't really want to get into the weeds in terms of, you know, particular words. I think the second part of the changes, the edit is edits that you have suggested in terms of softening the timeline, um, I, I think those are, are far more reasonable and, and doable. Um, but I would say that before our board makes any vote on or decision on changing this capital request, we would want to have town council's input on the recommendation that um, you've made, Anne Louise, to strike the language about um, elected and appointed needing to report to the select board with capital requests. And I say that because of the authority of the town administrator and wanting to make sure that, as I understand this policy, it's a, it's a tool that allows the town administrator to compile the capital requests. And so um, I, I need more information from town council personally. I think that's fair. I think that's totally fair. And just know this, I mean, obviously have town council look at it and, and look at the alternate language. I think you understand the spirit of what we're asking for here. Um, so that that seems reasonable, and we didn't expect this to be voted on tonight, just asking that it be looked at, so. Well, I appreciate you getting the feedback. That's good, thank you. John, you have comments? Uh, just a couple of them. Um, I, I think I see some of Ann Louise's concerns with respect to the language of boards, committees, commissions, and departments reporting to the select board. Um, I could work to change that language to be a little broader, uh, to perhaps state all boards, committees, commissions, and departments having business before the town within this warrant 
are to follow the procedure outlined below. Um, if it's Anne Louise's concern that we're colliding with some kind of uh, legal um, uh, boundaries of elected boards, I, I totally get that. However, um, I cannot and I will not change language that allows the select board to receive any and all content for the warrant to come through us. That's, uh, that's that. As far as I understand, it's very clear in our bylaws that the select board controls the warrant. And with all due respect to Ms. Hanstead, I understand from prior conversations with town council, the capital request policy is separate and distinct from the line item presentation and rights and rules as defined uh, by the Education Reform Act um, that are typically found in the omnibus. So to Tina's, there's clarification that has to be shed on, on the policy. I would think it would should come from a uh, council. So a couple of questions, Ann Louise, if I could, and Stacy, feel free to weigh in. Has your board, these edits are coming to us by an email from Ann Louise, who was kind enough to send them along tonight. Has your, has your um, um, school committee voted on these changes? Actually, and, I'm, and we're going to check the record on this. So this, just for everybody's benefit, because the policy is, I guess, now almost a year old, it was sent to the, our administrators, I believe, as an FYI last summer. They forwarded it to us. Um, and and it, so at that point, we, it wasn't so much inviting comment, but um, when we saw it, we did have the concerns that we're now sharing tonight. So we discussed them and I offered edits that I believe were on the record um, uh, in the school mm. committee. And if not, we will take care of that um, over the next week or at our next meeting, we can do that, I'm sure. But yeah, I, I believe it was. To your, chair, to your chairwoman, Stacey, I just recommend that your board, your committee, excuse me, have a chance to vote on any changes that come our way. And also to the extent that you folks have access to your own legal team to look at what kind of collision this policy might have with your with your um, boundaries, as Ann Louise pointed out, go for it. Find out what those concerns are, let us know. But I recall a conversation with town council about this some months ago and it was pretty airtight. So I'm all the ears if you've got some changes that make sense, but I, I, don't, I cannot reasonably understand or think at this point that I would yield to any uh, authority that's granted to the select board through the bylaw. Yeah, and just to be clear, I'm not suggesting that you don't have the authority that you have for um, for any articles in the warrant. That's, that's not it at all. It's, it's a line item provision on our input to that capital request. So, um, so there's a subtlety there, but we will check with council. We'll make sure, I'll make sure that I present this to the committee at large and then Stacy, you know, will communicate back to you any voting issues. Much appreciated. Thanks, please. Sure. Okay, thank you. I think that takes care of everything tonight with the school committee. Uh, any other comments? Or... Go right ahead, Stacy. No, I was saying thank you for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Pleasure. Okay. All right. Good have night. a nice evening, everyone. Good night, y'all. Good night. Okay, moving on, we have the budget review of technology, treasurer collector, and unemployment, Council on Age. And uh, so we have them in the um, agenda backup file, but I didn't know if there was um, someone from technology. Chris, if you wanted to weigh in on the budget. Uh, I can give a brief overview. Sure. Um, basically, to come in at the zero percent, I um, took a hundred dollars off of my office supplies because I don't use a lot of office supplies, so I basically cut that in half. I removed one computer from the new computer purchase line item for next year from the police department uh, to save five hundred sixty-one dollars, and then I removed three hundred and eight dollars from the computer equipment, which is basically all of the other purchases to like repair printers and other parts that we need to run the technology department to come in at a 0% increase. Okay, do we have questions, Tina? Yeah, um, Chris, it's, it's not necessarily related to the changes that you've made, um, 
but just following up on that conversation that we had with the with the school committee and capital requests, we, we actually didn't talk about it too much, but one of their capital requests is for technology and it's for their, um, they have a strategic plan for replacing devices and upgrading devices. It looks like on your budget, you have about seven and a half, eight thousand dollars um, It's line item 58,000, 58,700. Um, have you ever talked to the finance committee about using capital for these Actually, the upgrades? Sure, Tina, the, the line above the 58500 that is the plan that was put in place about three years ago. We replaced 30 computers a year plus one server. Okay. So that, that's the uh, 37915. So we, the FinCom wanted to get into a process of replacing basically 30 to every, you know, six years we kind of turn over our inventory of computers and stuff. And okay. so we don't take it from capital. They didn't want to actually take it from capital. Sorry, sorry, just for one more time. This is for computer upgrades and replacement costs? Replacement uh, of 30 computers and one server a year, correct. 30 computers and one server a year? Correct. Okay. And the Finance Committee has asked you to keep that in your operating budget? They have. We actually put it in about three years. We put it in in 2019. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. John, any questions? No, Chris, it seems like uh, hitting 0% was uh, a relatively small dollar amount. You said it was a $100 difference. Was that about right? Uh, well, total, it was about $1,000, 1041 Okay. And if I read it correctly, that 1041 is an increase to your salary in, a in FY21, correct? Uh, well, it was the contracted base from the past year. So that stays in place for FY21, correct? Correct. And then you just remove some lower office supply costs and things of that nature. Got it. There really isn't much to Chris's budget. <laughs> That's pretty. Part of there is not. It is about as simple as they get. So, nope, just confirming that his FY20 salary will be his FY21 salary. And that is the case, correct? That is correct. I'm good. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve uh, the revised 0% uh, budget for the Chris Mayo's technology uh, department. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And can we have a roll call vote also, please? Tina? Aye. Aye. John and Mark, aye. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right, moving on to the treasurer collector. Mary, are you on the line? I am on the line. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Um, can you so the, go over your budget, please? Yes. So the difference in the between the one percent uh, budget in the uh, level funded budget was three thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. To achieve level funded, uh, we reduced personnel services by two thousand two hundred and forty four dollars. And the balance of $1,655 came from the foreclosure legal line. Right. Okay. Any questions, Tina? Yeah, Mary, what is the impact of reducing those personnel services? How does that, what does that look and feel like? Um, all of my ladies are on, raise, um, on step raises. Uh, last year we had uh, people who left us that were at higher steps. So we were able to absorb it better than probably most departments. Okay. John, any questions? So Mary, can you confirm they will not be getting steps next year under this budget? They, they are getting their steps, um, but they're, the, the people that left were at steps like five and six. The current uh, set of employees are like steps two and three. So they're at a, a lower step than, than the previous department. Okay, so, so from a salary perspective, they, they under this budget, they'll get what they got in FY20 and steps only, but no colas or anything like that? Correct. Okay. Um, 
I actually only the only questions I'll have for you, Mary, are under the unemployment claim. So I'm I'm good on your budget right now. Okay. All right. Well, let's do a motion for Mary's budget first. We move to accept um, the treasurer collector budget as amended to meet the zero percent guidelines. Second. Do we have a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, Tina? Aye. Aye. Okay, roll call, Tina? Aye. Aye. John, Mark, aye. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, Mary, can you talk about the unemployment? So we've, um, since COVID-19 has struck, our unemployment claims have been um, increasing weekly. We have a maximum potential liability as of uh, Friday afternoon of $152,000. $386.62. In the employee benefits budget, um, we normally budget $50,000 for unemployment. I have increased that to $100,000. Um, so we're not surprised by any bills we get. We haven't seen a, a bill yet um, that have reflected the new claims. It should be coming in within the next week or two, but I, feel strongly that we should be proactive instead of reactive. So I have adjusted the um, employee's benefit budget and hopefully with your approval. Okay. Tina, any questions? Yeah, Mary, so in, in your two comments, uh, in your communication about this budget, you mentioned you're leaving in the 50,000 for the health insurance consultant. And I just wanna say, I, I strongly support that. I think that's absolutely the right thing to do. Um, we're hearing over and over again about the effect of uh, increasing health insurance premiums, even more uh, significant in light of uh, no COLAs for our employees. So I, I'm glad to see that's still in there. Uh, do we anticipate that those who are claiming um, unemployment now that that, the, that will reverse that when restrictions are lifted and things return to even a new normal and people return to work in some capacity. Um, do you anticipate that we'll see claims drop? This, this is entirely in your mind COVID related or is there some other um, factor here that you can share? I believe it is COVID uh, related. Um, a lot of the claims we've, come, we've seen come through are um, you know, daily subs that aren't getting paid at all. Uh, we, we pay a small portion of them. Coaches who normally would have coached the spring, um, the spring session of sports. Uh, firefighters who have been laid off from their regular jobs. Uh, and em regular employees that are getting paid through the town of Holliston that had second jobs that they're no longer working. So hopefully once, you know, everything is lifted, we'll see those uh, numbers reduced. But I still think we need to like I said before, be proactive. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mary. John, any questions? I do have a couple of questions, Mary. You just started to uh, talk a little bit about the dynamic of what you're seeing right now. We're seeing uh, a large spike in unemployment claims. And during the finance team uh, discussion last week, uh, we went into some of the individual claims. Many of them are coming from schools. Um, if I understand it correctly, you just mentioned we could have an employee who has not been laid off, but may have a second job, and that second job is now ended. And when it does, right. the employee is it goes to collect unemployment. Um, I how does this work? I mean, if if an individual is 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 fully employed by the by the town, how can they get unemployment for a part time job? I believe they look to all of the employees' wages. So if they're working for the school and they're working at Kohl's or some other place and Kohl's lays them off, then we have to pay our portion. Uh, when the bill comes in, um, I know Andrea is excellent at protesting any of those. And I get the bill, actually get the bill first so I can take a quick look at the names and say, okay, this one is being currently being paid through the school payroll or the town payroll. Um, we should not be paying for it and protest it. I see Keith has just popped in. That's great. Um, we had that conversation. Keith gave us some information last week on the finance team. Um, thank you for that information, Mary. Keith, can you take a deeper dive into this to help us understand uh, any liability that Tom may have? And, and frankly, if we are protesting these claims that come in, how successful are we? Um, I, as the person who, because we have more employees and the one who goes to all the hearings, that would be me. Um, the, the, 
Mary's correct. So if you're if you're employed by multiple entities, people, or you know places, if you lose hours or the job entirely, you're entitled to unemployment. Since take your take a person who makes a thousand dollars a week, so fifty thousand dollars a year, and they have another five thousand dollars in additional earnings from a second job. If they lose their second job, they'll be getting unemployment from the five thousand, not from the fifty thousand. So even though our numbers that get reported to us from the way initially show like what we pay them, they're not employed by us. So we will pick up a, a portion of that five thousand of of you know the five the the equivalent of what a uh, hundred dollars a week of of additional earnings. We'll pick up a share of that as opposed to you know the worrying about the other fifty thousand. Would it if if I could understand sort of the system? So the claim is made, the town has put on notice that you know. Bob Smith's filed unemployment. Are, are we obligated to start making payments into the, or are they drawing from our unemployment pool um, until or if we protest? Do we do we catch up later and recoup any earnings that were paid out erroneously? Um, with with regards to that, um, you know, until you have a hearing, you know, they usually side with the employee they they will see we report out our earnings to the you know to the state so they will see that the people are being paid so you know they know that this cohort of people has received earnings over the last is it is it uh is it 18 months Mary they go back I think I believe so and, yeah. but the unfortunate part is we only report the earnings at the end of the quarter mm -hmm. so there may be a, a time like in July after we reported our June 30th earnings that um, we'll be giving the credits back. Mm -hmm. so, so it's, it's you know, again, there can be timing issues. Um, you know, we, we, we usually are not successful when we fight these because the people are entitled to unemployment. Um, and since we're a pay-as-you-go uh, community, as probably 95% of the communities in Massachusetts are, the, you know, you are responsible for that because we're not paying into the insurance fund. We're, we're responsible for a portion of it, not all of it. Correct. We're, we're of our share of that of that unemployment. So, when Mary, question: When you see um, your your increase from fifty thousand to one hundred thousand for FY twenty one, is that fifty thousand increase? Is that the portional part that Keith just talked about, or the full obligation? It's not the full obligation. I was because we don't know if part of the bills are going to come in FY twenty or if they're coming in FY twenty one. It was just to sort of hedge our bets so we're not totally blindsided and then scrambling to look for another 50 grand um, later on. I'm hoping that we won't need it and we can get returned when we make budget adjustments if we see things start to reverse or it can flow into free cash. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Mary. You're welcome. Um, Keith Cassidy has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Michael Cassidy, Emergency Management Director. Uh, not so much a question, just a, a point of clarification, because I know it was it was mentioned by the Treasurer a few moments ago. And while I certainly have gone to and uh, testified in as many hearings as Mr. Boudet, I have gone to a few hearings on behalf of employees from the fire department who have filed for unemployment over the years, but were still working for the department as on-call members. And I was told by a DUA representative uh, at the time that due to the on-call staffing nature, although they would show up on an unemployment claim being sent to the town, uh, our obligation usually is zero dollars uh, as long as they are still active on our on-call force. So I just wanted to, to clarify that our liability is actually lower due to our on-call staffing than it would be if they were full-time members for us. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Anyone else Absolutely. want to comment? Okay. Um, so we need a motion. Uh, Mary, is that correct? Yes, please. Do we have a motion, Tina? Sure. Move to accept the amended, um, oh, I got the wrong name here, Mary, benefits budget um, to meet the zero. Un unemployment. No, you want to do the employee's benefit budget. Okay. Move to accept the amended employee benefits budget to meet the 0% guideline as presented by Mary tonight, our treasurer. 
Uh, this isn't a zero percent. Uh, the employee budget isn't subject to that. Hold on. Um, <coughs> I will move uh, move to accept the amended uh, employee benefits budget as presented this evening. Okay. Second. Uh, second with a question. Go ahead, John. I believe that was Sharon. That mark we heard was that correct? Was that you, Sharon? Premier. Okay, somebody what was us. the question, John? Just uh, going to validate that the total amount um, is nine million nine hundred fifty-three thousand one hundred sixty-eight dollars. The revised number. Correct. Yes. Thank you. So you have my second, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And a roll call. Tina. Aye. John. Aye. And Mark, I. Okay, Mary, you were all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Council on Aging Budget. Linda Marshall, you're up. Okay, so we also have a zero percent budget. To achieve that, we did take fifteen hundred out of regular salaries. Regular salaries is unique to us. That is the part of our budget that actually pays. Um, Benefited time for our drivers. So by benefited time, I mean uh, holiday time, vacation time, sick time. The MWRTA pays for actual anything related to driving passengers. Um, but back when we signed the contract, the agreement was that the town would cover those benefited hours. Because like Mary, I also now have a lot of newer drivers, so their salaries aren't as high. They don't have the four weeks vacation that we've had in the past yet. Um, so we're able to lower that. And then under purchase services, I did lower 500 from the utilities line as we have not met, was budgeted there for some time. And I also took $1,000 out of communication. And I did that as we have um, discontinued our contract for cell phones for the drivers. Over time, more and more of them have chosen to just use their personal cell phones rather than carrying two phones. Um, so we discontinued as of this month, um, and that will be a savings of a little better than $100 a month on that. And that brings us to the 0%. Um, the administrative assistant line are both the assistant director and the outreach coordinator, so that does reflect um, their step increases for this year, but it does not reflect any other COLA or any other increase. Okay, thank you. Tina, questions? Yeah, Linda, your budget back in whenever that was, February or March, you had a, a line item increase to ask for part-time position. You've removed that from this budget? Well, well we, had, we were asked to do a 0%. Right. I just want to confirm so, that that was one of the steps you took to amend this one of the, Yes, that is no longer in this budget. Is it your intention to ask for that again, uh, perhaps at fall town meeting, or bring that back up as a as an item? Because you were you were very strong in your just. It, it it absolutely is. Um, and actually, I have another issue when we've done the budget that I just want to make you aware of. Related, I mean, our numbers are still going up, and in fact, right now, although we don't have the programs going on, there's many things that take much more time for us to do because we're doing it remotely. We're doing individual one on one contacts with everyone but we might see them in the past as a group of 25 people. Um, so now we have to call each one of those individually. Yeah, we're delivering meals. So there's a number of things that are taking more time right now, but certainly our numbers continue to go up. Do you see then that your service model, um, how you deliver services to, to the elderly in our community, do you see that changing as you describe for the foreseeable future so that, you know, sort of when May 18th comes and, and whenever restrictions are lifted, we don't go back to what it was in March. Do you see this changing or do you see it going? Well, I definitely, at least for um, the, uh, certainly I hope not forever. Yeah. But I, I don't see us returning until the late stages. I've not had a conversation with Chief Cassidy, but working a career in senior services and being aware of, the high risk that this disease presents, especially to the population that we serve. Yeah. Um, we want, want to be extremely cautious as we look um, how and to bring it back. We um, are starting some online programs. Um, through, our yoga instructor is going to start Zoom classes. We're working with HCAT. We have programs that are um, being shown on HCAT cable uh, TV stations. 
Um, so we're looking at other ways to still get some involvement with our seniors beyond the one-to-one -one, um, calls, et cetera. We're still doing the newsletter, get information out to folks. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned because I think that those essential services that these, these seniors require uh, was in large part why you were looking for that part-time <laughs> back in March. And um, if anything, those essential services are even more important now. Um, Absolutely. In, in my mind, at least, I see the need for that part-time position even greater now than, than in March. Um, so I, I'm very concerned about it. I very much appreciate the fact that you submitted a 0% budget. Um, and I'm glad that you will bring this back up again in the fall. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's it. Thank you. John, questions? No, I don't. I uh, I sympathize with your um, your situation, Linda. We um, I, I agree with Tina. It's something that we'll have to look back and try to repair some damage done here. I know you were trying to make progress with the hire, but uh, other than that, it appears as though you've you've, you've submitted a budget that um, minimizes the pain, um, and I think that's um, something that we'll have to move forward with at this time. Okay. Yes, and I I too concur with my colleagues that. Um, it's a very trying time uh, for anyone in the in the business of caring for others, and uh, we hate to see um, your budget cut. But we're trying to um, fall within the guidelines, zero percent, uh, with with all the departments to uh, try to. Uh, Keep our heads above water with this pandemic. We appreciate it. We do understand that. So I have one other sort of related issue. I don't know if you want to vote first or if you want to hear my. Yeah, other. we'll vote. We'll vote and then we'll talk about the other issue. Okay. So I need a motion to accept uh, Linda Marshall's budget. Yeah, I move to accept uh, Linda Marshall's amended zero percent budget for the Council on Aging. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And roll call, Tina? Aye. John? Aye. And M Mark is aye. Okay, Linda, go ahead. Okay, so to further complicate my staffing, one of our staff members, our assistant director, is moving out of state at the beginning of next month. Um, so I have proposed to our board with unanimous approval, and I have since communicated with Jeff about this as well, is that we would like to rem uh, rem keep her on staff completely remotely. Of the three of us, she's certainly the one that spends the much greater time of her time on technology. She is the editor and publisher of our newsletter. She enters all of the statistics in my senior center. We just got all the new 55-year-olds um, from the town clerk that manually have to be entered. Um, so there's a lot of that. Even, even when we're fully operational, Linda spends by far the greater amount of time on technology than either of the other two of us in terms of just part of her regular job. She would be able to continue to do 95% of what she's doing now out of state, especially without seniors in. I spoke with Chris Mayo. He can set her up with technology, so she'll still be able to get and receive phone calls from our seniors, certainly be able to communicate online. We um, had a training today and working with Zoom meetings, both as with the staff as well as with our seniors. So I wanted to alert you to that. Um, I know Jeff did consult legal to make sure there were no issues um, related to having her stay on staff um, living out of state and he found no reason. Um, so right now we're planning that through September 1st. Okay, Tina, any questions? Who does that leave then uh, in terms of um, paid staff providing the direct services visiting? So, um, so that so that would be Marty Schneier, who is our outreach coordinator, okay. and myself. And myself. Okay. And you see that as as uh, manageable through September first. I I I I do. Um, especially with some of the projects going on, it's we're trying to set up more remote programming. Linda, by far, is much more skilled technology wise than either Marty or I have. Um, we we cringe when we learned she was leaving for that. Well, many reasons, but including that. And again, she can still help us with the contact with our seniors. 
Okay, and then what happened September 1st? Well, they wanted us to put a time frame on, so legal did say that it, you know we could consider extending it at that point in time if that was a decision made by all of us. Ultimately, the goal is when we have a new normal that we would replace our position. I'm not sure right now where the standing is with the town on any new hiring. I know that I've um, heard stated through the FinCom that there were no job postings at this time, but I haven't pursued that specifically. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Questions, John? No questions, Linda. I just wanted to uh, point out, as you may have heard earlier in our meeting, where we're trying to put some uh, effort into um, uh, making the workplace uh, safe for all employees when, when they return. So I would encourage you on uh, the next several days to touch base with uh, Chief Cassidy and Mr. Keyes to ensure that the senior center does have any and all um, precautions addressed and uh, ready for those workers and and the customers to return as necessary. Mr. Keese actually came out this morning and we did a walkthrough and identified some uh, things that we will do to help ensure safety. Outstanding. Other than that, the matter involving personnel, I'll leave it to the council. That's their, that's their domain. Thank you. We just want to alert everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to some board business. Uh, 112 budget. Uh, let's uh, let's discuss discuss it. I know we discussed it last week, but we need to to uh, contemplate making a decision. Um, Tina. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was looking for information on on a, kind of what a one twelve budget would look like for July. I haven't seen it, so I don't really have any comments. Um, I did read over the DLS bulletin, as I mentioned earlier, from uh, the one that was released on Friday. So at a very, very broad, in a very broad way, I have an understanding of what should should be and should not be in the um, sort of July version of a 112 budget. But Sharon, uh, Sharon uh, shared with us an email um, showing the, the minimum amount that, uh, should be approved for, for a 112 budget. I don't know if that's, um, I've got it here, but I don't know if you got it on your computer. I but she, did not receive it today. I, I did talk to uh, the she, town administrator. She sent it out, she sent it out May 8th. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering, do you have a copy of it, John? I do not. Uh, yeah, I'd have to uh, go into my laptop. What's I that? Think I, when I, I don't have it handy. I'd have to go into my laptop. I think what she provided okay. was a draft um, proposal of budgets. Um, I, I, I quickly scanned it. I did not go into the details on it. Um, okay. Frankly, I I think if I if I have to imagine what it is, it's 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 a, a simple presentation of what we asked you to do. To me, Mark, right. the real issue is not so much the content of what that Excel spreadsheet has, it's the process ahead that um, needs to be clarified. Now that we've taken a vote to extend town meeting into July, I think it's uh, prudent at this point to engage town council um, to help us uh, navigate the guidelines and the um, work that has to be done to submit this 112 budget on time uh, for certification by the Department of Revenue. Uh, as I mentioned, I think last week, those details, and Jeff, I mean, not Jeff, uh, Jay Tellerman said the same thing. Uh, DOR is not yet fully in, you know, out there with these guidelines. I think it's gonna be relatively straightforward based on a DLS phone call I was on two weeks ago. Um, but to me, that's the logical next step, uh, Mr. Chairman, is to find um, find out what those instructions are, and then we can bring the, uh, the work that Sharon did into the template, share this with the Finance Committee, and gives ourselves enough time to get it submitted and approved before July 1st. Um, when I talked to Pooja, uh, she mentioned that um, if we voted on the and approved it with our board, that she would then help us 
with the application itself. Um, so that is another option, but I, I, I like the idea of waiting for town council to get back to us. Right. Uh, I did see the email about that, so uh, why don't we just table this for now and talk about it next week? Yeah, I guess uh, through Mr. Ritter, we may want to invite Mr. Talliman in and up to that point in time, see if he can help source uh, guidelines. I'll, I'll do my best um, to do the same and um, bring it forth as it's available. Sounds like a plan. Does that work for you, Mr. Ritter? Yes, it does. Okay. Moving on, uh, annual town meeting warrant. Mr. Ritter, do you have any? So a little update here on the warrant. Um, we've got a little bit of extra time. Um, this uh, warrant is drafted on uh, May 8th, uh, which is Friday, uh, 927. And um, thinking, if you look at Article 5, uh, this is the town clerk's compensation. Uh, I'm not sure why it's a standalone, standalone article, but I was thinking of moving it up to the compensation for elected officials article, which includes the uh, Board of Assessors um, and the select board salaries annually. So, um, Can you talk to Mr. Talman about that? I will, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, article 7 is the, um, which dovetails into the department head salary payments. Um, article 7 contemplated the uh, 20, FY20 managerial compensation adjustments at 40, $47,582. Um, based on an opinion from town council and the Department of Revenue, um, this can be paid for um, out of the uh, employee's benefits account uh, allocation. So um, I we propose that we remo remove that article from, from the warrant at this point in time. I agree. Mrs. Hine, any comments? No. Uh, John, any comments? I'd actually prefer to leave uh, the warrant intact, Mr. Chairman, at this time. Um, I would recommend that over the next week or two, we possibly entertain the idea of a separate meeting um, to look deeper at the, at the warrant. We really haven't spent any time um, any, you know, uh, pulling out any articles or anything like that, uh, knowing right, that right. the fluid nature of what we're dealing with is driving this. Um, during yes, last and, and the extension of town meeting to uh, correct. During last week's finance committee meeting, it was heard that uh, some of the members were critical of our board's inaction on the warrant, and I think it's um, worthy at this point to announce to those listening. The reason is because there was no urgency. Um, the The town meeting um, scheduling allowed us to, um, at this point, wait until. Uh, literally the last minute to benefit the town's interest to pull out any articles that have no interest. I think earlier tonight we talked about capital items with the schools. If I'm going to look into my crystal ball, the June town meeting warrant is going to be the definition of austere. It's going to be very, very short. It'll contain um, minimal information and just enough business to get us through to hopefully October. Um, so at this point, I would recommend we have a separate meeting just to talk about the warrant and what items should be carved out, what items should remain in and take no action until then, instead of cherry picking Mark, you know. Is that okay with you, Jeff? It's fine with me. Um, did you want to set a date or a time on that in the next two weeks? Um, why don't we do that by email and figure out a good time? Okay. Mark, I just have All one. Right. Mark, I'm sorry, I just yes. have one question. Jeff, we got that letter today from the American uh, Kennel Club in response to Article 33. Is that something we need town council input for? I sent it to town council. Okay. Uh, I didn't ask him to, you know, input, provide any specific input. I just sent it to him as an FYI. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, we have some appointments on call EMTs for the fire department. Mr. Cassidy is requesting the appointment of three on-call EMTs. This is a town administrator uh, appointment, barring any vetoes from us. So have you approved them, Jeff? Yes, I have. Any questions for Mr. Ritter? None no, at all. Uh, I can speak to the character okay. of one of them in particular, Caroline Ward. So I have no objections and would, would elevate her to the top of my list. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. 
Uh, and we had uh, mentioned about department head salary payments. Would we cut the clarification from Department of Revenue and uh, Town Council, Mr. Talliman? So I don't think we've got uh, anything there we need to discuss unless one of you need to or want to. I'd like to make a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, that I, I I came to the Finance Committee meeting late last week. I, I worked late, so it was on tape. Um, I didn't have the benefit of calling in in real time. But towards the end of their meeting, they discussed um, the matter involving the department head salaries. Um, Mr. Talliman had de delivered to the town um, an opinion um, that I thought was sound and relevant to the task at hand of resolving the issue. Um, apparently, the Finance Committee chairman had a an emotional reaction that was um, uh, contained in response. Um, and later on in that meeting last Tuesday night, um, it would seem as though some members of his committee were privy to that ta that email and the content. I, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, at the risk of uh, sounding overly displeased as a public official, my skin is thick. There were certain remarks made um, within that discussion that I found extremely off-putting, very, very inaccurate and frankly, unacceptable from other elected officials. Uh, to suggest one minute, for one minute, that our board doesn't act in full transparency or doesn't have the best interests of the town at heart when we seek legal opinions is completely inaccurate. Um, I've said all along that the matter involving the department head salary and the dispute apparently between the boards um, is a necessary part of government. We need to have our disagreements. And we need to bring them to the town meeting where they, re where they, they need to her. The issue involving the transfers was never meant to be a town meeting style debate. It was simply a request to administratively handle the transfer of funds. It turns out that was moot. It wasn't necessary. I don't understand why members of the finance committee felt so aggrieved at that decision that they felt as though we were removing their opportunity to speak to this issue. I welcome their feedback. I want their debate at town meeting when we have it. It was always going to be an FY21 matter. And to bring into the comments that they had last week were so unprofessional and unacceptable. I, I, I have to tell you, I was very upset listening to some of the remarks made by a few of the members um, to the point where I think uh, some of them really need to check if they're in the right business. Um, we all act in good faith. There is no attempts here to hide anything. This is the most transparent board, in my opinion, that I've ever served on. And I find any suggestion otherwise to be uh, offensive. So this evening, I, you know, I, I just point out that although we will proceed with hopefully the administrative transfer of funds as dictated and as envisioned, um, the view ahead for FY21 is, is not great for the town. But I firmly believe, and I think I share the opinion of the Finance Committee in this way, that that's where the debates need to happen, not buried at the, you know, the end of a two-hour meeting with uh, no item on their agenda to talk about um, and minimal people watching. Bring your debate to the meeting. Let's have it. Let's talk about it. Let's put any kind of fact on the table and, and let the voters decide if they always do. I sincerely welcome that opportunity. So that's the only thing I want to say about that matter, Mark. Thanks so much for listening. Yes, as a matter of transparency, it's important to make sure committees put the items on their agenda uh, speaking about transparency so that the residents of Holliston have an opportunity to know that you're going to talk about something of that importance and so that they can ask questions should they want to. So um, again, I couldn't agree with you more, John. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, kind of a sad, actually, uh, that performance uh, last Tuesday night. In fact, Mr. Chairman, uh, noting that this is on our agenda, I do see that there are three members of the Finance Committee on this call. Um, if they want to contribute their thoughts at all, this is a good opportunity to do so. It's an open meeting. Ab absolutely. Anyone from the Finance Committee wish to uh, speak? Do so right now. This is this is Tan Offer. I'd like to address some of those comments. Go right ahead. 
So to, to Mr. To Mr. Kern's point, uh, we would have loved the opportunity to address this uh, at the October fall town meeting. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the select board removed the article to discuss the transfers at that meeting, um, which has also caused a variety of different repercussions uh, and, and, and follow throughs. Uh, so, you know, we, we wanted to have that debate at town meeting. I don't think it's appropriate to spend money in one fiscal year because you want to have the debate about spending the money in the future in another fiscal year. Um, and, and as far as it not being on the agenda, we have on the agenda the budget and, and fiscal year 2021 and on all items on our on our on our agenda every day. So this was perfectly uh, prudent to discuss at our last meeting. Certainly, we're trying to hide anything, and and you know I, I'm not I'm frankly not sure why um, that that that's come up. Um, we're the finance committee. We talk about the finances of the town, and we have on our on our on our agenda uh, all of these all of these items. So, you know, we we've you know been looking to have a conversation with you about these issues. Um, but again, we wanted to address it in the uh, the fall town meeting when, when the money was to be allocated. You pulled the, the article from the warrant, which didn't allow us to do that. So, you know, to talk about transparency and start throwing daggers at the finance committee for that is 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 frankly uh, also below you. So, thank you very much. I could ask Mr. Alfred a question, Mr. Aronian. Sure. Mr. Alfred, could you please answer a question for me? What is so not transparent from the select board regarding the movement of money administratively in FY20? What authority are we removing from you to discuss this at the annual town meeting? Please explain. Okay, so you're, 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 you're mixing two different things. You're mixing no, I'm not, Mr. Ron. No, I'm okay, not. Can I, can I answer your question? Would you, would you give me the opportunity to answer my question? I didn't interrupt you. So you were talking about a, a transfer of money and spending of money in fiscal year 20. And you're now asking us to debate that, excuse me, you're asking us now to debate that in for, for a discussion about fiscal year 2021. We absolutely will have that discussion about fiscal year 2021, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that money spent in 2020 to just be you know, shoved under the, under the rug or, 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 or ignored um, and given, you know, money was put aside for managerial salary adjustments. We're not debating this, and right? That's not up for debate, right? We all agree on that. The, the at least from the finance committee, from my perspective, certainly personally, and I think most members of the finance committee, we, um, based on our experience with past select boards, are, um, were under the impression that there would be a, a collaborative sort of, this is what we're looking to do, and this is what the final cost was. And keep in mind, it was up to $75,000 as well. It wasn't, you had to spend $75,000. When you came back, and by the way, this was for an annual, this is in my mind anyway, was an annual cost, not a one year sort of, we're gonna start it, you know, two thirds of the way through the year so that we can fit it in. You guys came up with a number that was 20 some odd thousand dollars, I don't know, 90,000, whatever it was, $90,000, um, versus the $75,000 and on an annual cost basis, but because you started it later in the year, it was able to fit into what that information was for the year. Needless to say- Mr. Alfred, you know, Mr. Alfred, um, did Ken Sager discuss with you the information I gave him at a meeting that I had one-on-one -on -one with him? Did he, did, he, did he share that information with you? Um, I'm not. I'm think. not sure what information you're re re discussing. You just sort of, sort of spoke about a different number of different vague things. Of, well, uh, one meeting you well, had some information. What what information? What meeting? When was this? Because because he he was supposed to share that information and what information, uh, Mark? Well, I I ordered a complete review uh, of the of the department head salaries situation after the blow up at your finance committee meeting. And um, I explained to, to Ken um, that um, that town council had recommended we get rid of article one because it was redundant and not needed. He felt that the town had already voted to temporarily put the uh, proceeds in the benefits account, knowing full well what they were going to be used for. 
And secondly, I explained to Ken that there was a mistake made um, by everyone in town hall, including the select board and the finance committee, as none of us caught in the wage chart uh, that was that was put together for us um, by our town treasurer. Uh, no one caught that the elected official of our town clerk was put into the mix. And that shouldn't have been put into the chart um, because she's an elected official. She's the only elected department head. And that's why it was, it was missed. But there was no malice meant and there was no, um, you know, simply put, once I realized uh, myself and Kate Federer from town council, the labor attorney, went to see uh, Liz and our town clerk. And um, uh, we felt terrible, and so did she, that she'd already uh, collected about three weeks of, of additional salary that she had to give back. Um, but she understood that, and she realized that um, it's something that, that all of us, including your committee, should have caught, but we didn't. It was a mistake. So we backed that out, I explained to Ken, and that brought it well below the 75,000. So there really is, um, it's unfortunate um, that, it, that these things happen in town government, but they do happen. And we have to, at the end of the day, Take care of any mistakes. Um, and so, as I said, Liz, um, through a schedule, paid back those amounts. And we'll, we'll look at her, her salary as a separate article in the warrant this spring to, to deal with it. Now, in Liz's case, just so you know the history, when she was hired by Paul LeBeau, he, he, um, wasn't yeah, able this to is pay a, her a lot. Town official. Paul didn't hire her. So I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But when when the um, salary was discussed, um, Liz needed two more certificates, and so she she since has gotten those two certificates, and therefore we'll look at her salary. Uh, to increase at this spring town meeting. We're, we're not arguing about the, the merits here or there of, of the, the changes that were made, but, but the fact of the matter remains, only because of the removal of the article and the fact that you could not put through the pay raise because the article wasn't there of the town um, clerk and some, and some partial year payments, did the money come down under $75,000? And furthermore, oh. because you removed article one, from the from the warrant in the fall, there were other ramifications, other things that we needed to get done that couldn't get done. It, 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 I, I don't know what this communication you're talking about with Ken pertains to, and what time and when it was being very sort of you know unclear about that. So I'm not going to answer whether I knew about it or not because I'm not sure what I was I'm being asked to know whether I knew about. But it, it's also a kind of a, a, a moot point um, a, a, as well. So. Uh, you know, this is this is clearly a disagreement be between our two boards. I, I think it, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly where it, where it stems from, um, but the, the the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, we feel the the select board has gone out of their way to um, work around, if not certainly not legally. We we don't. We, no one on on the finance committee that I have ever heard. I stated in any way that we believe that the select board has acted in any way um, illicitly or, 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 any, or anything, but, but certainly uh, outside sort of the spirit of, of the working within, the, within sort of town government and within the finance committee's statutory authority as well. Go ahead, John. Mr. Alfred, I've uh, given the opportunity to be heard, but I have to remind you, you haven't answered my question yet. Would you like me to ask it again, sir? Okay, go ahead. Mr. Alfred, I'd like to know what grievance the Finance Committee had learning that the select board was going to administratively transfer the funds 
for the department head salaries in FY20 from the employee benefits to the various line items, why is your board last Tuesday aggrieved by this process? What are we holding back from you? Well, I'm pretty sure that I, I did sort of answer that, but I mean, I think that it's because the spending based upon the signed contracts with the managerial department heads was greater than the $75,000 that was appropriated or that was set aside to make those decisions at a later date. And to be clear, when we talk about these things, it was never this carte blanche blank check that I think town meeting ever envisioned giving to the select board to, I mean, what, what if, I mean, what if you had decided that instead of splitting the $75,000 out amongst, you know, 13, I don't know, 12, half a dozen individuals, you were going to give one individual the, the, the entire amount. I, w w I mean, it, w should there have not been any review in that case by town meeting or by the, the finance committee? I mean, no one envisioned this being something that was, I mean, not, not certainly me and, and I don't think most of the members of the board, and I would, I would bet if you pulled town meeting, not town meeting, envisioned this being this carte blanche check to be to be given to the select board to be doled out um, in any way possible, in any way that they saw fit. And as I said, had you given seventy five thousand dollars raise to one individual, I think that everyone would have agreed that that probably was 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 not appropriate. So my my grievance is that that you have not come to the finance committee or you know asked to, to discuss with the finance committee the appropriateness of what you have done and you've caused all this consternation by pulling the article last fall and essentially um, muting the ability to debate it then relatively soon after the, the implementation when changes could theoretically have been made. At this point, people have gotten adjusted to their new salaries, they're, they're, you know, it's been spent, it's blah, 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 it's whatever, um, but you know this. So that's my grievance. I, I don't think that that's a uh, okay. there. John, go ahead, John. Mr. Alfred, I think through your remarks tonight, you're demonstrating again the, the depth of your understanding of what's happening here. I'm not impressed, Dan. I really am. You're, you're continuing to Appreciate that, John. I'm sorry, I'm speaking, Dan. You're continuing well, you to get me, so I'll give you the same last treatment. October, and there's nothing new here. We said all along, all along, that your issue is with FY21. We were no, I've never said that. No, we did. We oh, did. so you said what I you said what I think we, my issue is. So you're telling me what I think. Excuse me. No, I'm telling you what we said. We said to you all along that the matter involving the department head salaries and the equity that had to be valued out for FY21 would be worked on with your committee to build the FY21 budget. The matter involving FY20 was settled. You said in your meeting last week. You did that the select board creates messes that the finance committee has to clean up. Yep. Is that true, Mr. Alfred? Absolutely. Please tell us what mess you're talking about. You pulled article one from the warrant in the fall town meeting. That would not allow the town. That was recommended council. by town council. That was recommended to remove it by town council, Dan. I, I, okay, well, it's, I, I, the town I, council I, made the mess at the, in the, the select board made it at the behest of the town council. I, I, don't, I don't know, but you pulled that warrant article yep. Which yep. didn't allow the town clerk's salary to be adjusted, which yep. didn't allow us to put money in the up branch account to to uh, cut down the trees as as was necessary was to improve improvements at the senior center because we couldn't get that money properly put into the right budgets. How is that not a mess? Yeah, the town clerk salary would have to have its own article, and there was no article for it uh, that particular town meeting. It as I said, been. everyone, everyone missed it, including your committee, Dan. Had the salary um, you could have seen it as well. Had the salary adjustment been in our No, one, no, you can't. Big, no, big. you can't do it. You have to have a separate article for the salary. You just cannot include it. They needed a separate article tonight. I, I just heard debate about it needing a separate article tonight and whether to move the article that contained just the town clerk's salary into the town, into the into the other uh, uh, elected official um, salaries. So yeah, she was the down, only down. one though. She was That's the right. only one um, that needed that designation for that article. No, because you had you there have, wasn't you anything. Have, there wasn't anything else. To other elected okay. town officials. 
I don't, you're, you're counter, you're contradicting yourself from earlier tonight. So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he is, Dan. You've stated publicly as an elected official that this board, our select board, created a mess. Absolutely. A mess. Furthermore, yep. you, said, you said that the town council obviously works on behalf of the select board, not the town's interest. Furthermore, you said that the select board is not transparent in its work. You made a lot of very personal accusations, Dan. And I found them very, very upsetting. And you need to own them because right now, tonight, I'm not you know, them. Sure, for you, you know, where you can just bully people in their remarks. You are not informed. You're making comments that don't make sense, Dan. There was no mess. There is full transparency. The matter involving department head salaries has been exhaustively discussed publicly. The select board had an independent view by the Department of Revenue. In our general counsel, look at the remarks made by the, the, the chairman of the finance committee, and it was clearly outlined. Everything was above, done above board. Your chairman didn't like it. He wrote a very, very emotional response to our town um, council, which is a public record. I want all of this to be in the public view. There's nothing to hide. Nothing. But your, your board seems to be content on frothing up bad vibes and throwing out descriptions of my board, our board, that are completely inaccurate and offensive. And you need to own that, Dan. Tonight, okay. you're sitting on our board meeting, and you sat there until we called you out. Why didn't you bring this up earlier? Why haven't you talked more about what exactly is not transparent about what we're doing? Please explain, Dan. I'm all ears. So I think I think it's ironic, John, that, that you were accusing me of, of, of bullying, but we'll, we'll move past that. Um, I, I don't understand why you're you a bully on not his speaking. Dan. You're a bully and everybody knows it. How's that? Okay, and I would say the it to you. So so we'll move past that. Um the why and now I'm being accused of not speaking earlier when I've been told that uh, you know you don't like the way that these meetings are conducted and everything. You you I wasn't called on. I didn't feel that there had been anything until this time for me to to, to raise my hand about. I was actually getting ready to say something, as you said. There are a few members of the finance committee here, so I did. So I don't. But I, but, but I know Ben raised his hand, and you know maybe maybe someone else can can uh, can can speak from the finance committee. But uh, I stand by all my statements. Uh, if you read the email from the town council, it, it felt very much like town council was looking for a solution to the select board's problem, not the town's problem, and that by not bringing these issues to for a very clear debate in front of town meeting. I believe is, is not in the best and full transparency. And furthermore, your removal of Article 1 clearly has caused a mess. We have all different kinds of issues and ramifications that are coming from that. That really isn't debatable. Whether you did it at the because town council recommended it or not, well, maybe town council screwed up and maybe we should reassess whether town council is acti actually acting in our best interest and maybe look for a different town council. But it doesn't mean people don't make mistakes, but, you know. It... Tina, you have a question? No, it's just incredibly frustrating uh, on all counts. And I, I don't doubt that there's tremendous frustration on the finance committee. It's just so clear from my point of view, from where I sit, that there's no avoiding this issue uh, being raised by the finance committee without satisfying their concerns wholly. I feel like an apology was issued by the select board back in the fall. That was not enough. I feel like we received, as John mentioned, out, uh, out of town, out of department input from the Department of Revenue. That's not enough. It's a difference of opinion at this point. And I don't know where we go from here, except that this continually comes up. I, I personally found some of the comments upsetting from Tuesday night, that's not the first time that I felt that way, and that, that's probably on me, but um, this keeps coming up, and the only way this seems to be satisfied is to address the Finance Committee's um, difference of opinion, and, and basically it seems that we need to say we're wrong, and I don't, I'm not prepared to say that, John's not prepared to say that, Mark's not prepared to say that, we have Town Council and Department of Revenue input. I, there's, where do we go from here? What what comes next? Because there are far more important issues at hand. I mean, I think, Dan, and, and anyone on the Finance Committee, anyone listening to this call, you hear us repeatedly going over the budgets that are presented to us. These are difficult decisions that we have to make. We're about to hire a new town administrator. We have big, big issues. 
And to keep having this come up and take this type of bandwidth, this type of time to discuss, I, I, I'm just incredibly frustrated. It's 9.30. I'm probably incredibly tired as well, but um, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say except what makes this go away? Well, we're going we're gonna to move on with the uh, agenda here. I think we've discussed this enough, but I thank everyone for their input. And um, we're going to move on to uh, some senior center donations. Um, there were three donations from residents for the nutrition program. Um, do you have a list of what those were, Jeff? Um, I do. Please. Uh, we have a donation here from um, uh, to the senior center received from Ellie Stockpole. Um, donation for meals program, $100. Okay. And the second? The second one is uh, to the Holliston Senior Center, uh, Jane Dave Davis. Uh, donation for the meals uh, received, $100. And the third one? And third one <clears throat> received from Linda Marshall. A donation for the nutrition program, $100. Okay. That's Do we it. have a motion to approve? Move to accept the three $100 donations for the nutrition program at the Senior Center. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And roll call, Tina? Aye. John? Aye. And Mark, aye. Okay, thank you. Facility manager software reserve fund transfer. Mr. Keith, do you want to speak about this? Yes, let me uh, start my video. Yes, I would like to, and I um, uh, met with the uh, town accountant of this as, um, as well and spoke with the FinCom last week. Uh, but uh, there is a surplus uh, in my salary budget line. Basically, uh, we budgeted in the starting position, which was in uh, January 1st to the end of the fiscal year in July. I started midway through the year in March. There is an excess amount of salary that has not been spent. I would like to take that money and apply it to the purchase of uh, computerized maintenance software package for the facilities department. So uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, technically on the agenda, it says a uh, reserve fund tra transfer. You're looking for a um, year-end transfer versus a reserve fund transfer. That's correct. It's a, uh, a year-end uh, line. <clears throat> Okay. And where is it, uh, James? Where is the paperwork on this? Um, speaking with uh, the town accountant on Friday, uh, they were going to generate the paperwork and serve it to the board. Okay, I, we haven't seen that yet, um, but I suspect the board can make the motion to approve the transfer and then sign the paperwork later. Move to uh, approve the year-end transfer from a salary line item to uh, purchase for the purchase of software program as recommended by James Keast. Do we have a second? Uh, second with a qualification, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I understand that the um, the town accountant may have the uh, funds that um, sum up the thirty thousand dollars from various accounts. So Tina's motion may be limiting. Um, so I would say a motion to um, accept a line item transfer from any and all um, the any and all sources to support the software um, purchase as identified by Mr. Keist. Okay. And uh, that's your second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I have a roll call, Mrs. Hine? Aye. Aye. John and Mark, aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, governance committee appointment. Uh, past town administrator Paul LeBeau um, has sent a letter of interest to be on the governance committee appointment. 
Any comments, Tina? No, I think it would be a fantastic uh, addition and um, I welcome his uh, request to join the governance committee. No objections whatsoever. And John. Second that. And um, I think it's uh, wonderful to have him on the committee myself. Thank you, Paul. And can we have a motion to approve? Move to uh, appoint uh, Paul Lebeau to the governance committee. I think, Mark, we just need to determine the term. There's a, a one year, a two year, and a, a three year. And I think the three year term's already been appointed to, to Sam. Do I have that correct? That's correct. Okay, so it's, uh, I believe it's either one or two year. Um, did he, met, I'm just looking for his, his uh, letter, whether or not he specified he did not, to he did not indicate, well, you know, what a preference would be for a term, but I would recommend a two-year term. Two years it is. So move to appoint Paul Lebeau uh, to a two-year position on the governance committee. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Tina, do you say aye? Aye. Okay. aye. John, I see a hint. Um, roll call, Tina? Aye. John? Aye. And Mark, okay, thank you. We have some meeting minutes for March 9th and April 23rd. And uh, if we have a motion. It is late. Uh, move to accept the meeting minutes of March 9th, 2020 and April 23rd, 2020. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And roll call, Tina? Aye. John and Mark, aye. Okay, we have year-end and reserve fund transfers. We have nothing at the moment. Oh, we have nothing at the moment, right? Okay. Uh, truck route, Lowland Industrial Park, do you want to speak about that? It's really, uh, Tina, I think, uh, asked that this be put on the agenda. You want this on the agenda next week? <laughs> well. Or do you want to talk this week? I'm, I'm good to go now. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, so thank you to Chief Stone, who I believe is or was on the call, yep, uh, is on the call. Thank you very much for preparing this memo. Um, this comes out of a very reasonable approach to addressing resident concerns over truck traffic down Lowland Street to Woodland. Um, we all know that there's an approved route off of uh, Whitney Street to get onto Route 16, and, and that is the access and egress point for the Lowland industrial park and so this memo is advising businesses of that fact and also alerting businesses in the lowland industrial park to the steps that the town is taking to seek a truck exclusion so want to be really clear that this memo is not about the truck exclusion that is work yet to be done with dot um, i spoke with sean uh, reese today and that, that work is underway He's been in communication with Mass DOT, and we're just lining up the necessary steps to getting that truck exclusion. Very optimistic about that. So this memo serves, again, two purposes. One is to point out to the industrial park businesses that they have an approved route um, through to Route 16, and second, to advise them that the town is seeking a um, truck exclusion on uh, Woodland Street, which would make actual exclusion by Lowland uh, not a possibility. Um, and to Chief Stone's um, point, when we discussed this possible memo, he raised the, the fact that alerting the businesses is good practice because that gives them some time to adjust their, um, how they come in and out of the park so that when we get a truck exclusion and the money fines start coming, they've had time to adapt, time to change. So it's, it's good practice to let the businesses know they have time to, again, um, change their practices and how they come in and out of the park. So that's what I want to say about the, the, the uh, memo and hope that we can approve it tonight and that we can uh, ask Chief Stone to um, deliver this to the businesses within the industrial park. John, comments. So Jeff, um, I understand town council has weighed in on us. Is that correct? Um, yes, he has given a partial opinion. Is something you want to share with us this evening? Um, I don't have it in front of me, so. My issue has been that um, the town and, and through our role, we need to explore any and all legal avenues for a remedy here. 
Um, I'm, I'm very frustrated. I'm very sympathetic to the residents um, who've been very clear about their patience and how it's been tried over the years. Nothing changes. Um, notwithstanding the direction, a directive that Chief Stone has drafted, which, you know, through the force of his, of his uh, pen, has nothing more than an advisory or guidance memo effect to it. I'm looking for something that's more sustainable, that can correct the, truff, truff, the truck traffic problem up there. And I believe um, Attorney Tellerman gave us some guidance on that. If you're not prepared to talk about that tonight, so be it. In addition, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could bring us back a little bit, I think to last fall when we had the planning board in with members of the community, um, my recollection is a more permanent, sustainable solution should and could go through the planning board to consider um, drafting uh, new truck routes and um, have that approved by town meeting. Is that your recollection, Mark? Yes. Um, so through Mr. Ritter and obviously with, 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 with whatever emphasis we can provide it, I'd like to send correspondence to the planning board asking them to urgently address this issue on behalf of the constituents and the taxpayers in that neighborhood to come up with a solution that gives us some kind of a permanent um, solution. Because right now, I, I really feel like there's a little bit of kick the can down the road and we need to fix it. So that's my opinion. Yeah, can I just add to that though? I, I, so John, uh, well, are you opposed in any way to the memo? I mean, I think the memo serves as public education, a reminder. It is it is that, Tina, I agree. And it's something okay. we can do today. I'm thinking sustainable change here. Something okay. that has the force of a bylaw or an enforcement under our authority, which I think Tellerman is looking into. Okay, I think we have some from the planning board on the call. Um, and if I'm correct on that and she's prepared to speak, I would point out the fact that I believe the permits issued to the businesses within the industrial park specify in the permit that they're given and uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong, um, Karen, if you're prepared to speak. I believe those permits specified Whitney as the access point to um, the industrial park. I'm not sure if, if that's language that's strong enough, John, to, to your point, or if you're looking for that and more. I'm uh, looking for this. Where do we, if our board does not have the full control and the authority to change the truck route traffic, who does and how do we get that done? Could, could I speak for a moment since Tina asked me to? Hi, John. Hi, Mark. Sure. Oh. Uh, it's Karen Langdon. Um, when the planning board considers any um, permit in the industrial park, it is specified through a condition that um, traffic is truck traffic is to be uh, directed to use and utilize Jeffrey to Whitney to Washington. Um, I believe that uh, this week a violation was handed out to uh, one of the businesses operating in the industrial park um, because there was a specific for truck routes that were being uh, violated and the residents um, had been calling in on that and wanted something done. So, I, I, you know, as both a resident and a planning board member, I guess I'm asking like, what is, what, what specifically are you looking for the planning board to provide for you that we're not already doing, which is that, you know, um, Stanley Black and Decker, Decker Lista has a very specific condition. Um, Flexhead has a very specific condition. Jill Wood has a very specific condition. Gel had a very specific condition. Cold Chain had a very specific condition. So they all have them. Um, and speaking specifically to Ty Wood and to Gel, um, and even when Cold Chain was operating there, they were abiding by that for the most part. However, you know, life has changed and so has technology. Um, so I'm wondering what it is that the planning board should do. Or what, what it is well, I, I think I think you could come up with a schematic with a highlighted route for each company, and um, that would be the official designation of egress that would be approved by the planning board and also by the select board. So. You know, every every business would get this uh, copy, 
and um, it would be very clear that this is the route you are to take, and there would be um, consequences if you didn't. So I think that's what we're working toward here with, uh, you know, having this uh, come up at town meeting. Uh, but, you know, it needs to come through the planning board first, um, and then it would come to our board. And in the interim, would that advisory memo, memo still go out? I think that would be great to have an advisory memo in the in the interim, yeah. And, you know, to head in the right direction um, okay, so that, we know, that we know we need to get to. Planning board does a schematic, and town council has something that they are going to direct or clarify on, and continuing forward with the select board working through the DPW through mass DOT for truck exclusion. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the schematic that everybody can be on board with. Um, Which I mean, that should help, that should help visually, you know? Which, right, which we use all the time, so that should not be right. an issue. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So Anything else you wanna, um, that you wanna um, do tonight, Tina, regarding this? Just wondering, Mark, if we need a motion or if we can just ask Jeff to um, direct Chief Stone to uh, send the memo out. So moved. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So you have a roll directive. Call. And roll call, please. <coughs> Tina? Aye. John? Aye. And Mark? Aye. Okay. Thank you. So Jeff will take care of that directive from the board. Thank you. And thank you. We'll get back to you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good night. Good night, Good night. now. Good morning. <laughs> Do we have been any other business, Mr. Ritter? Nope. Uh, we need uh, Mrs. Uh, Sherman has forwarded a document for Brooks Mount Condo Minimum Association. Condominium? Yes, the uh, documents are in the to be signed for. Uh, I'll sign that. Yep. Okay. And she's forwarded a document from the ZBA as well. Is that in there? Yes, it is. For technical assistance for Chapter 40B development. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, that's all I have. Any new business, Mrs. Hine? Uh, well, just coming back to the comments way back at the beginning of Chief Cassidy on the call about the businesses, uh, I, I would like to raise the possibility of asking for an opinion from our public safety officials, town planning and building inspector, on the feasibility of allowing merchants to sell products on the sidewalks. Um, that I bring this to the board from a call that I was on facilitated by Mary Greendale with downtown businesses. There was a lot of concern over the small size of their spaces. And I guess they are, they're building inventory and they're looking, they're going to need to, you know, they're trying to sell that inventory. And so one of the brainstorming ideas was, can we sell on, on sidewalks um, outside of our storefronts? And, um, Obviously, that's not an easy yes answer or, or um, decision to make. So the, the comment came up is, could we get an opinion from public safety and the town planner and, and building inspector on, again, the feasibility? And I think Chief Cassidy spoke to that earlier today. To say yes. Yeah, he special did. permits, ADA requirements, and so on. So right. Um, right. I, I just wanted to explore what the next step was for our board. Yeah, and I think he said as of the 18th, um, you know, we would have more information as to what's going to be allowed uh, by the governor. And then we, we kind of look into this then a little bit better. So this is maybe a, could we possibly have this at, next Monday? Yes, we have an agenda item for May 8th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it should be an agenda item for next Monday, Jeff. Okay. Great. And then last thing, I really just wanted to thank Chris Mayo. Um, He's, he's doing an absolutely amazing job. I know, Chris, there's not many people on the call to hear this, thanks, but we got off to a real rocky start there in the beginning, and you handled it with great. Uh, you handled it promptly and quickly and allowed the business of this board to continue. But uh, you do that for every boarding committee that's meeting. I've been on nine Green Street committee meetings that you've been involved in. 
um, and, and many others. So I just wanted to thank you for all that you're doing. Um, I, I would not have handled what happened earlier in this phone call with the grace that you did, nor the promptness. Um, so I really appreciate the service you're giving um, in these days of remote participation. It's, it's truly above and beyond. And I really want to thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. He's giving you a thumbs up. I just want him to know, too, that I don't blush well. Uh, and so no. the fact that <laughs> that saved a whole bunch of funny stuff going on over here. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Mark blushes a lot, but you never know it tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you kind of have a back shadow there, John. It makes it kind of hard to see what's going oh. on. Any other business that you'd like to discuss, John? I a quick question, um, Jeff. Uh, whereas Tina and I are both remote, do you require a signature for any documents um, that were signed off on? Well, tomorrow morning I'll send out uh, electronically um, the warrant, and you can, if you don't mind, uh, signing it and just scan it, scan it, and send it back to me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn uh, tonight's meeting. Second. It is pretty late. <laughs> Nine fifty. All, all in favor? Aye. Roll call. And roll call. Aye. Tina. Yes. Tina. Yes. John. Aye. And Mark. Aye. Okay. Thank you, folks, for listening. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you next week. Good night now. <coughs>